It's time for High School Football. Presented by TISD and Cox Communications of Tyler. Brought to you by Dairy Queen and Supercuts. Also brought to you by these sponsors. Get ready. High School Football is just ahead. Know what I like about Texas? There ain't no place that I'd rather be. You got a much nicer pace. The family has its place, and you can still find a wide open space. Terry Queen's what I like about Texas. From the blizzard to the dude, man, I know. From the cities out to the ranches, there's a DQ wherever I go. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Man, are we going to take every lab full speed? Yeah! Are we going to trade paint without fear? Yeah! Are we going to brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Super cut. Sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. Hi, I'm Angie Billings. I have taught at Lee for 11 years. I teach English, and you're watching TISD Football on Cox. Captains meeting in midfield. The referee is Eddie Parsley from the San Antonio group. And uh, again, now we'll go down to midfield as well as the captains introduce each other. Walter Simpson, Saron Black, Dominique Van Zandt, okay, Captain. and Cordero Mumford. That's tails. That's heads. That's heads. 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 Tails. Come on, four minutes. Head what do you, what do you call it? It's, you're going to call heads. heads. He called heads, Captain. Black Judge Turner McGarrity. And it is, and it is heads. You can, you can either exercise, exercise your job, job now, now or to or begin the second half. We'll defer. You want you to defer. Garland has won the toss and they have elected to defer. You want the ball. And Robert E. Lee will take the ball first. No win today. Overcast skies. Again, Eddie Parsley is the lead official. The referee, A.J. Lopez, the umpire. William Hurt, the linesman. Gilbert Segura is the line judge and the Turner McGarity, the back judge. Well, Randy, Kerry, we'll go to Craig Smoke in a moment. This is why you do all those extra conditioning drills and 
November and whenever the season ends all the way to August, the two-a-days and the regular season, the district game. This is what it's all about. That's what it's all about, and that's the beauty, you know, that's the real beauty of it. And what's really great is the weather's changed the last week or two. It really finally feels like football season, a nice crisp November afternoon, and uh, we're looking forward to the next three hours of uh, some uh, great action, Kerry. That's right. Uh, that's right. This game's going to come down to who controls the line of scrimmage. Garland is geared to control that line of sure. scrimmage. Sure. And Robert E. Lee needs to take him out of their game and dominate. Robert E. Lee wants to try to see if they can force Garland to throw the ball a little bit. If they don't, then Garland can take and keep it. And, of course, Lee's pretty good at that as well. Craig Smoke on the sidelines. Your first impressions of this playoff game between Lee and Garland. Craig? Uh, definitely a great playoff atmosphere. I think the key for Robert Lee today is on offense, they can't get stagnant like they had the past couple weeks. All the jumping off sides, they can't have any of that in a game like this against a great team in Garland. And Lee's defense can have to come out here and prove themselves like they have all year. All right, Craig will be giving us updates from the sideline. And the fans jacked up today. They need it. Garland will be kicking off, and it's, by the way, a heck of a kicker, Matt Fodge, who has already committed to play college football at Oklahoma State, and he's got a cannon for a leg, very similar to Cole Skates. Tyrone Ross, for the first time this year, is back deep to field kickoffs along with Tony Bush. Peyton Price and Jason Williams, the upbacks. I'll give you the Lee offensive line. Saran Black, 6'5", 325, senior. Sam Banks, 5'9", 225, senior, 235. Center Blake Larman, 5'10", 230, senior, who rotates in with Andrew Bailey, the junior. Brian Culp, 6'1", 273, senior, right guard. Matt Holland, 6'1", 271, senior, right tackle. Tight ends, Jonah Murphy, the senior. John Giles, the junior, who's a receiving weapon. Receivers, Walter Simpson, the senior, with three touchdown catches, a great possession receiver. Tony Bush, speed burner, won the district championship in the 200 meters. And the triple jump. Here is Fodge with a little pooch kick, and Jason Williams will kick it at about the 17 of the 20, 25, 30. Knocked down at the 34-yard line. Lee's quarterback is Josh Hill, the senior, who's thrown for 2,508 yards in his career. 86 of 145 with six picks and 12 touchdowns this year. He's a senior. Peyton Price, the up back, the full back, who's had six touchdowns on the ground, two through the air, and has accounted for 926 total yards this year. And Tyrone Ross, over 4,000 yards rushing in his career, 4,900 yards in total offense. The tailback has 1,136 yards this year with 16 touchdowns. 17 overall and Tyrone on the stretch first play off left tackle for about a yard and that is it it is a very active Garland House defense Devonta Brown Brandon Antwine Cedric uh, Brown and Brian Jones tackle end and tackle uh, we've got to check a couple of players on the initial and that was Devonta Brown also the linebackers Terrence Henderson Rock Morgan and Michael Horn cornerbacks are Desmond Baker he's had an interception and block punt return for a touchdown and JJ McCoy the other corner Devin McDowell and John Murphy are the safeties. Second down and nine for Robert E. Lee at their 35-yard line, and they'll throw early. Fade pattern out of the backfield. Peyton Price, 35-40. Tripped up at the 43-yard line. Eight-yard gain. J.J. McCoy comes up to make the stop, but a nice little flare. We haven't seen that at all this year, and it's now third down and about two for Robert E. Lee. He had a nice little escort, too, from Brian Culp and Matt Holland up front to pull outside to make a nice key block. And McCoy is there to help make the stop on Peyton Price. Third down and a long yard for Robert E. Lee at their 43-yard line. Jonathan Williams in at the receiver spot to the near side. Tight end, near side, up the middle. Price first down, 45 midfield, into Garden territory. Gain of about 10 and a first down, Robert E. Lee. That tear play just straight up the gut. Gets a nice push block up front from Blake Larman on the nose guard as he just obliterates the man in front of him. That will be Brandon Antwine. And the door is open for Peyton Price and a nice third down gainer for Price. Brian Culp with the key block that time for Robert E. Lee as they're at the Garland Owls 46 yard line. Garland with a four man front, but they'll bring a bunch of people. 47 an active player, Brandon Antwine. Lee. And there's movement early. Pre-snap, John Giles picked up his hand. And those are the penalties that have just absolutely killed this Lee football team, even when they're winning big throughout the year. And I'm telling you, this game, Lee cannot afford any kind of penalties that's not the aggressive kind. Well, you know, this just 
on and on and on. And they average at least four a game by our count uh, over the last four to five weeks. And earlier in the season, it was a real, real bugaboo for them. And it's been that way the whole year. It is definitely And you got the momentum there. You got a nice little swing pattern. You got the 10 yard run from the fullback. You're in Garland territory. And John's an aggressive player, but he kind of flinched early. And it cost Lee five. They're back at their 49 now. Jonah Murphy now in attack or tight end. They run the wing back counter. Jason Williams has to break one tackle to get back to the line of scrimmage. And again, a very active middle linebacker, the senior, Rock Morgan. He maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. It brings up second down and 15. Unable to get a key block there and a really a great blitz into the middle of the field from Rock Morgan. Had help as well from Antoine at his two-tech position to help mop up the tackle on Williams. So 9.47 to go opening quarter. First drive of the game, Lee started just outside their 30. Second down and 15 at the 49 yard line. In motion now, T.Y. Far side, tight end to the near side and Josh will go throw. Will set up in the pocket, he's got a man deep that is Tyrone, picked off by Garland at the 25. What a great play by the cornerback, number five, J.J. McCoy, as he was all over T.Y. with great coverage and Lee tries to go back across the field and this Garland defense will turn it over on you a lot, quite a bit. That's a pick off of the 29 up to 24. A superb defensive effort from the Garland Owls defensive back as he just cut right in front of a high pass from Tyrone Ross who uh, was unable to get to the pass and a great interception for Garland as they get the first turnover of the ball game. Day. And the one concern that Mike Owens and defensive coordinator Randy Huffstickler and assistant head coach Jay Law have is can they get the ball away from Garland who loves to pound at you with the running backs and Reinhard Weiss the senior and Darius Borders. They go play action, roll far side. Here's a pass over the middle, and it's picked off by Lee. Micah Johnson answers. Tim Crosby, the quarterback, overshoots his intended receiver, and Micah Johnson's fourth interception of the year. The defense starting to create turnovers the last three or four weeks. <laughs> That's a, another great interception, another great athletic play from a defensive back early in this contest as Micah Johnson leapt up high to bring it down off his fingertips and Lee gets a turnover right back uh, to take over in Garland territory. Garland trying to maybe confuse Lee with a little play action here and it cost him. Lee at the 38-yard line. They run T.Y. on the outside and he will not get much and lose a yard. Give him two. A loss of two and J.J. McCoy and Terrence Henderson, the junior, on this very active Garland defense and T.Y. loses two. Well, unable to get outside because of the penetration from Garland's uh, speed rushers on the ends and also their linebackers. They get to the ball very well. Lee's offensive line is going to have a nice task today to fight off the Garland defensive seven. T.Y. with two carries for a loss of a yard and a lot of negative plays early for both teams. There are a lot of negative plays. Second down and 12, Lee at the 40 of Garland. And they run the... Little trap up the middle and nothing there. Nothing at all. That play just took way too much time. And McDowell, the safety, 5'10", 170, junior. And this will bring up third and 10. And this got to give Garland's defense, if they can hold Lee three and out here after the pick, deep in their territory, a tremendous amount of confidence, which they have already with the interception. Well, they are very athletic on their defense. If they're really their front seven, they're going to dare Lee to throw the football. And as we've seen already, they're up to the task in the secondary, following the football and making the pick on the last lead drive. Third and 11. Now does he have time to throw it? Lee at the 39 of Garland, and Josh will throw. Sits far sideline. Now wants to scramble. Gets a block. No, he doesn't. Gets around the corner. Now runs out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And absolute great coverage downfield from Devin McDowell. And also John Murphy, the safety. There didn't seem to be many receivers in the pattern. Ross was deep and Simpson was deep. And that was about it. There was no safety valve. And Cedric Washington was there. And Lee will come in and punt the ball. And this Garland defense, I told you, Randy, very active. Robert E. Lee has now had to turn it over on the pick. And now we'll have to punt the football. Well, it was a missed block by John Giles, who did not hit Washington. And it was uh, keeping uh, Hill from getting outside. And Washington made a great play on defense. Coming in at the game at the last second. And here comes a penalty against Robert E. Lee as Quet Nicholson. And Mike Owens is nuclear as he runs on the field at the last second. And quite frankly, you waste a timeout when you just should have taken the five yard penalty because of where you're punting from in the first place. We'll take a break. Eight minutes to go, first quarter, no score. Back in 30 seconds on News Talk 600 KTBB.
To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. Card shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Okay, we'd like you to try two frozen lattes. One is from a national chain of coffee shops, and the other is new from Dairy Queen. Mmm, this one's fantastic. Looks like you chose the new DQ Mulatte. Great. Mmm. Okay, you can give it back now. Mm. Test it over, let it go. No! The new DQ Mulatte Frozen Blended Coffee, made with creamy DQ soft serve in three tempting flavors. Grab one and DQ something different. Likes it a lot. Eight minutes to go, opening quarter. We've already had some fireworks, but no scoring. Lee throws an interception. Garland, their first offensive play. They are picked off by Micah Johnson, but Lee goes three and out here and gets nothing out of it. Fourth down, and they punt from the Garland 38. Back to punt is Josh Hill. Up man is Peyton Price. They have faked it one time before, but probably not in this condition. Here's Josh, he punts it. Nice little end over end punt that McDowell will fair catch at the 11-yard line, and that is where the Owls will start this drive. A 27-yard punt from Josh Hill, but very important because he knocks Garland back inside the 15-yard line. Lee up front, Ricky Sherfield and Jason St uh, and Cordero Mumford, the senior defensive end, Jacoby McKenzie, the defensive tackle, the junior, who has three sacks this year. Linebackers are Cole Skates in the middle, Warren DeHaven and Dominique Van Zandt. Skates, the leading tackle on the team. Safeties are Nick Mitchell, to carry in Cuba, and Jason Stripling. Stripling plays quite a bit on the offensive line. Matt Uzel's in as well as a linebacker, and here comes the wing tee, and they run it up the middle, nothing there. Great job defensively by Warren DeHaven. Corners of Laquette Nicholson, Micah Johnson, safeties Nick Mitchell and Takari and Cuba, and a gain of a yard that time for Darius Borders. Well, the red wave up front, Warren DeHaven is also there to help box it up. Nowhere to go on a blast play for Garland on their first down. Lee has to stop the wing tee, which is the old same offense that Alan Wilson ran so effectively at John Tyler during their glory runs in the 90s. Quarterback is Tim Crosby, a junior. He will take the snap up the middle. Nothing there. Cole skates and Nick Mitchell, the safety, who also plays up on the line of scrimmage along with Uzel, and he may have lost a yard back to the 11-yard line. Jacoby McKenzie, though, does the, the great job at the outset right the line of scrimmage. He just busts through and directs the play outside instead of inside. In between the guard and the center is where Garland wanted to run, but Lee strung it out nicely and give credit to Lacey up front. Here's a big third down play here. Garland back deep in their own territory at the 11-yard line. They'll take borders. They'll split on the wing. Crosby, they run the wing back reverse, and Cole Skates eats it up. Matt Gutierrez and Dominique Van Zandt. What a great play by Dominique Van Zandt, excuse me, along with Skates, and Garland loses a yard back to the 10 of the lead defense up to the challenge early. No one's fooled on misdirection. Of course, Lee sees that kind of play all, every, every day in practice, and they just read it perfectly. Skates is there first. He penetrates and gets past the guard on the block on Grider, and he just gets in and whips the, uh, the running back on the play. Back to field, the punt for Lee is Tony Bush, and again now Matt Fodge is already committed to kicking Oklahoma State and they got a rich history of kickers. He's standing in the end zone, which is the blue and white of John Tyner. Here's the snap, here's the punt, kind of shanks it off the side of his foot and wow, Lee will get great field position early and now guys, they've been in Garland territory with the opening drive. Didn't get anything out of it because of the pick. Started the drive at the 40, got nothing out of it, three and out. Now they get the ball at the Garland, 33. They must take advantage of the good field position early. Well, field position is the name of a game when it appears that the two defenses are uh, running things right now. And uh, Lee has got to get some points on the board on this drive. It's a golden opportunity. Jonathan Williams will split to the near side. Walter Simpson far side. Lee with Giles, the tight end, and Tyler Fleet, the tight end. Double tight set with T.Y., the deep back. Josh Hill, the quarterback from the 33. Stretch play, T.Y. bounces outside and gets two or three tough yards inside the 30. 
five yards in the play, and that's a nice, tough run. And T.Y., as we know, despite the fact that he's just 5'8", 186, is not afraid to put a shoulder into somebody. It is second down and five. Well, he gets a nice pull block from the outside from Banks, pulling from his left guard position. He peels back, and he hits number 24, Rock Morgan, and also uh, in on the play, too, is Antoine and Terrence Henderson for the Garland Owls. Second down and five, Simpson far side, left hash mark, Lee going towards the east side of the end zone at Trinity Mother Francis Row Stadium. From the 28, Hill, wing back reverse fake, will want to throw. Now over the middle, T.Y. open, first down at the 17. Very well developed play, great job up front by the offensive line to give him plenty of time. And Desmond Baker makes the stop in a gain of 11, and we've already noticed one thing, they're putting T.Y. out in the passing game today. Well, they're running from the slot, and of course they, they run the misdirection on the fake, but what sells it too is that T.Y. just runs across the middle of the field and stops, and his quarterback is able to find him and throws a dart right inside of two Garland defenders for the completion. The center on this drive, 51, Blake Larman. Banks and Colt, the guards, Holland and Black are the tackles. They did a great job with pass protection, offset eye. T.Y. up the middle, right tackle for about two or three tough yards, down to about the 15, Cedric Brown is there on the stop for Garland, whose defense has given up 260.8 yards a game, evenly rushing 128, passing 132, but they've only yielded 14 and a half points a game so far through 10. Well, they're very stingy and they're very tough. And what, what appears to me is, uh, is their strength on defense. They're not really, really fast, but they pursue very well and have great instincts. And they're, they're giving Lee Fitz really right now. Second down eight, Robert E. Lee at the Garland 15 yard line with 420 to go opening quarter. And there's a pre-snap movement call against Robert E. Lee. Been their story all year long. Brian Culp, the right guard, the 6'1", 273 senior. And I'm telling you, this Garland team defensively is so good, you cannot. It's hard enough when it's second down and three or four. You surely can't have second down and 13, first and 15. And here we are, 4.15 to go in the first quarter. Lee's had two pre-snap penalties so far. Aggressive mistakes and penalties are one thing, but the ones where you're just not thinking very well or not focused, and that could be the case right there. And Culp's a heck of a lineman, the right guard. Now second down, 13 for Lee after their second procedure call. In motion, T.Y. Josh will try to throw, sets up the screen. He's got Peyton Price, 15 yard line. Block downfield, Culp, and he will score! Touchdown! Touchdown! Robert E. Lee touchdown, and Brian Culp made the key block, and so did John Giles. The middle screen has been a disaster most of this year. Worked to perfection, 20 yards. With the release on the right side, too. At first, Garden thought it might have been a swing out pass, but it was down the field a bit. The blockers got out of the way, allowed the rush to come in very, very meekly, and Josh Hill finds Price, and Price turns on the Jets and gets in the end zone for six. And I'll tell you what Josh Hill did. Blake Larman, Culp, and Giles, huge blocks. He had a little more over-the-top touch on that one that time to Peyton. Here's the snap, hold by Hill, the kick by Skates is up and good, and with 3.51 to go first quarter, get up and yell, it is 7-0. Robert E. Lee, we're back in 60 seconds. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Represent your team like never before. On the field, on the court, it's all in our store. The spirit of your team, the season of your dreams. Looking for the victory, we've got what you need. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Here's a question. If you needed your insurance, who would you call? Not the name of the company but the name of the person. You've got two seconds. Coming up blank, you may want to consider Allstate. You'd have a local agent you can count on, a licensed professional whose name you know, not just a number. You deserve a relationship with a real person. For all your insurance needs, call the McIntyre Insurance Agency in the Albertson Shopping Center. Tyler Independent School District offers more advanced studies programs than any other school system in East Texas. The International Baccalaureate Program challenges students through a rigorous academic curriculum. Mary Lee Jones at MIT calls it the best high school prep curriculum an American school can offer. Education Week magazine calls the IB program the Cadillac of college prep programs. Just one more way, Tyler ISD provides every child every opportunity every day. 
That used to be one of Lee's most effective plays. It's been kind of tough to run that this year, but it was run very well. He let the defense get a little closer to him, and Josh with a nice touch over the head of a lineman, and Peyton Price has scored another touchdown this year. He now has scored nine on the year. Here comes the kickoff from Micah Johnson, squibs it, Brown about the 15-yard line. It gets loose at the 10, and Garvin will now kick it around, and it's still loose, and they will pick it up at the 9-yard line. Boy, that got real dangerous. Devin McDowell kind of had got kind of a hot potato right there. 7-0 Leah Randy. Robert Ely scoring summary. Four plays, 33 yards and 204, and it's culminated with a 20-yard screen pass touchdown. Peyton Price takes the reception and gets into the end zone, and this passes from Josh Hill for six. So now Garland will start at the nine-yard line. Craig Smoke. Yeah, go great job on that last drive. Uh, Jeremy, uh, sorry, Adrian Beard did a great job of getting over there, almost able to get the fumble on that kickoff. They got it back just in time, but a great job by the Lee special team. 3.47 to go. They go full back up to gut for about three or four yards, out to the 15. He's a low. That's Dante Sloan, who has 85 carries. 527 yards and three touchdowns, and a 55-yarder is as long, and he got five off right guard, and Cole Skates makes the stop for Robert E. Lee. They get a great block up front from uh, Scott Hayes, their right guard, and also their center, Carlos Perez, to push out that way for the gainer. Sloan's a load. Here's another up, up right tackle. There he goes again. Up right tackle for 15, 20, 25 yards outside the lead or their 37-yard line. And a gain of 22 yards in Michelin skates, and that's what they do best is pound on it. Power, power football. Just get it and go right and get behind your big guys on that side with Bowen the tight end and Oleg Badu, also the right tackle, getting a big push. It's almost as if uh, Jeff Jordan said, okay, enough of this messing around. Here comes the wing back fake play action pass. Now Crosby wants to throw it. Gets a great block outside 40, about seven yards, and he got a tremendous peel back block from Sloan. And Warren DeHaven was there, along with Ricky Sherfield. But Crosby's dancing around, and he picked up six yards. Well, I don't think he had the play down that he wanted. He tucked the ball under awfully quick as his receiver couldn't get out, and that was to be Sloan. But Sloan turned around and alertly made a key block to open the door for his quarterback to pick up a good seven-yard game. He ear -holed Nick Mitchell, who was about to drop him for a pretty short game, but he got seven on the play. Second down and three. Here is Borders off right left tackle. Breaks a tackle. He might go. 40. He's 30. To carry and Cuba tries to catch him. He does it. Touchdown. Garland. Wow. 56 yards. And it's almost like Lee scoring has awakened the Garland offense as well. Well, they got mad, and really no one at home for Lee after he got past the line of scrimmage. The only person there that appeared to be was De Haven on this near side, but he squirts free, and he also gets a nice block too. It cuts back down the sideline on the near side to score for Garland. Craig Smoke. Yeah, they talked about Quet Nicholson over on the sideline. He got sucked in a little bit, and Borders was able with the speed to get around the side. Quet Nicholson didn't have a chance to get him, and after that, it was all grass. To carry and Cuba tried to run him down, but he broke uh, again, even that tackle, about the five because of the momentum. Now there's a pre snap call here on the extra point from Fodge. They did not get the kickoff, and I think Lee may have jumped off sides. Dead ball. No procedure against Garland, but I'm telling you, this is an explosive team. Listen to this. Garland this year has touchdown runs from Weiss of 74 and 59, Sloan 55, Borders 54, Davis has got a long touchdown run. Also, again, they've had long passing touchdowns of 80 yards and 69 yards. Here's now Fodge, this is more like a field goal. Kick is up, and the kick is good. And Garland, just like that, has scored with 2.28 to go first quarter. Buckle the chin straps, gonna be a good one. 7-7, Garland and Lee on KTBB. For the best treats and eats and hottest winning in Texas, you gotta go to DQ. Only DQ's got the classic four-piece all-white chicken strip country basket served with fries, Texas toast, and the best green gravy anywhere for just $3.99. Only DQ's got a cool creamy banana split made with DQ soft serve for $1.99. And only DQ's got the peel away giveaway game where you can win food, treat prizes, or your chance to win a brand new Dodge Ram 1500 Lone Star Edition pickup. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're going to go to clear helmets so our racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on that. And I'm out of here.
Fellas, yeah, you're mine. That's not where you going? Man. Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? Hello, my name is George Faber, and I'm the Visual Performing Arts Director for TISD. It is my pleasure to serve as the administrator of many fine award-winning programs in our district from kindergarten through high school, as well as work with many highly qualified teachers. Our main goal is to help students receive a well-rounded education of mind, body, and soul to promote the integration of arts into math, science, reading, English, and social studies. You're watching TISD Football on Cox. Don't forget now, you can watch this game next Monday and Wednesday on Cox Communications channels 18 or 62, depending on whether you have upgraded cable or not, thanks to the guys at Glow in the Dark Productions. 7 7, 228 to go, first quarter. The Garland scoring summary David, four plays, 91 yards in 219. Wow. Darius Borders takes it to the house from 56 yards out, and it's a brand new game. 91 yards in four plays. Here's Fox, high and very deep, and Tony Bush will not be able to return this one. He dropped it anyway, then falls back on it. But he's had some problems. He's a great receiver, but return game on punts and kicks, he's had the uh, uh, slippery hands, and he, he kind of just took a little josh, kind of kicked it back to the official there, uh, like a soccer style. So Robert Lee's offense now had great field position, got the touchdown on the screen pass to Peyton Price, and now they will start at their 20-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven is our score at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium in Tyler. Uh, Andrew Bailey will get this series, the junior center. And he'll lead out the Lee offense at their 20-yard line. Josh Hill with two receivers, Bush and Simpson near side, McCoy and Murphy on them. They run the stretch play to T.Y. And he has nowhere to go. He gets a couple of yards and he dances out to the 22-3 yard line. It looked like he had nothing and Terrence Henderson, the junior outside linebacker, makes the stop at a gain of three. Well, Brian Jones had him just beyond, just inside the 20-yard line, but he was able to skirt free of him and kind of do an ole move on him, and then he just tippy toes down the sideline and picks up, a, a, makes something out of nothing, Dave. 2.21 to go, clock stops as T.Y. was also knocked out of bounds. And that's also one reason why they're using him in the passing game. They feel like they could try to get him loose on the linebacker or maybe a safety. They tried that early in a couple of drives, and they got the nice pass for a first down. Williams split near side, split backs. T.Y. and Peyton Price. This is Peyton off right tackle. Nothing there. He might have lost a yard. And he gets drilled. I'm talking about Garland, number 42, Murphy, the safety. Number 49, Michael Horn, the sophomore. And it's third down and nine. Andrew Kirk on the defensive end made the initial move as he got by the block on the outside from up front from uh, from Holland just beat him and also had to force out Price to the right side. Price is nailed with no gainer. Garland's defensive players are jacked up, dancing around McDowell and Baker, the corner in safety. It's a big third down early. Lee in third and seven at their 23. Gave him a pretty good spot. Josh will throw. Will now try to step up in the pocket over the middle. First down, Tony Bush outside the 35. And the offensive line is giving Josh Hill not only time, but a perfect pocket to throw. 16 yards and a first down. Well, they just do a fantastic job, as you mentioned, in a nice little route run from Bush. He takes off, kind of does a little sneak move, and then cuts back across to the inside of the field. And his quarterback, with about five seconds to throw the ball, finds him and just puts a nice little dart right on the money. You give him that kind of time with Simpson, Bush, Williams, and others it's going to be tough you're right first down Lee at the 39 huge third down conversion Murphy the tight end on the near side on the left hash here is Jason Williams bounces outside 40 no block there he got tripped up and again another loss on a running play guys it looks like Lee is going to have to try to run it at times they're going to win this game or loosen them up by throwing the football and J.J. McCoy senior this guy can play some football. Well, he reads the play so beautifully, and he gets back from the block outside. He just beats it, and he just dives right in front of Jason Williams and topples him over for a loss on the play for Lee. 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. Mike Owens did tell me, so did Dow Wynn and Gary Fleet, the offensive coordinators. There will be some negative plays. What they are hoping is they get the big plays as well in the scene. Second down, Lee at their 38-yard run. Williams near side, play action. Josh again sets up, now has no time. Now he rolls to his left pass, overshoots, or throws it behind Williams, who is wide open for a first down, and he had a little more time than that. But he had to get rid of it, and Williams right at midfield. It's third and 11. 
Williams sets up on the right slot and runs back across the field, and he's tangled up with very briefly by Horn, the linebacker, but then he gets by him, and Josh has a roll out of the pocket and finds the receiver, but just throws a yard or so behind him, sliding down from behind. He can't make the catch. Blake Larman back in at safety as Bailey checks out. Third down and 11. Simpson and Williams far side. Four receivers set. Williams and Simpson far side. Bush and Child in the slot on third and 11. Hill will try to throw it. Has all day. Has all sorts of time. Now throws it over the middle. Williams incomplete. Again, he had all day to throw the football, but there was no safety valve. T.Y. was on this side, and when Josh had to go to the far side, he had no chance. And Garland's defense is really playing well, and Lee will have to punt for the second time. Well, that's a coverage incompletion chalked up for the Owl defense. They just keep on the receivers, don't let them get away. And you mentioned T.Y. came in the right flat. He danced on down another eight or 10 yards, and the linebacker came out and picked him up very alertly, or he was standing wide open near midfield for a brief Here's a second. timeout, Garland, as they have issues. Remember, Lee had to take a timeout on a punt? Well, Garland has to do that because big number 72, Cedric Brown couldn't get off the field in time. 17 seconds to go, 7-7, seven, seven, tie first quarter, back in 30 seconds on KTBB. The daily download on Fuse. It's a countdown and free online music. Music. But it's a long day if you're waiting for dial-up. Get Cox high-speed internet and go to cox.net. Enter the Get Your Daily Download sweepstakes. Win a trip backstage with the host at Fuse's New York studio, or you can win a TV PC package. Activate Cox high-speed internet service, and you'll get a cool Fuse watch. The Daily Download on Fuse, weekdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Download your favorite songs in seconds with Cox high-speed internet. Go to cox.net and order today. Know what I like about Texas? There ain't no place that I'd rather be. You got a much nicer pace. The family has its place, and you can still find a wide open space. Terry Queen's what I like about Texas. From the blizzard to the dude, man, I know. From the cities out to the ranches, there's a DQ wherever I go. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Not many teams have uh, been able to slow down the Lee offense, but right now, Garland has done that so far. It's 7-7, first quarter, long time to go. But Garland on that offensive drive now, stopping Lee after giving up one first down. They should get pretty good field position as they send McDowell and McCoy back deep. Now remember, Desmond Baker has a long return on a punt, but it was a block punt of 78 yards. He's on the uh, corner. Josh Hill at his 25, averaging 42.9 yards per punt. Best in the district. Nice snap from Giles. Punts kind of high and wobbly, and it should be a good return. McDowell at the 25, looks for a block, gets outside, and will step out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Boy, it looked like a clip at the end of that play, but no call as it came from the drag part of it. And uh, Garland gets great field position at the 31-yard line. Not a very good punt, 35 yards, but good coverage from Lee as they up four on the return. And now Lee's defense, you got to wonder. They have to respond here and make a stop. After that four-play, 91-yard touchdown, and Lee now will have four men on the front line, and they, four linebackers, Matt Uzell, that's what they did the first drop. And Matt Uzell will play up the line of scrimmage. First down, they wing tee it. Here's another big breakaway, 40, 30, 45 near midfield to carry in Cuba, the safety on the pitch back to the running back who picks up big yardage. Number 32, Antonio Davis is going to play at University of Louisiana Monroe, 17 yards. They get a good bit of blocking up front from Hayes and Olimbado, who just push out and open a hole for the tailback to get into the open in a nice first down game. Boy, Garland's like a choo-choo train right now. They're feeling a little extra coal inside that engine as they have now, think about this, four plays in the last five have been 10 yards or more. From their 49, the pitch back, this is Borders. This time Lee does a better job of wrapping him up just inside Lee territory. The Haven Stripling were there. Jason the senior with 35 tackles. A gain of two that ends the first quarter. Garland at the Lee 49 were tied at seven. A Division I 5A playoff game on News Talk 600. KTBB back in a moment. In the game of life, there are no timeouts. Only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. 
That place is Tyler Junior College. Living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Represent your team like never before. On the field, on the court, it's all in our store. The spirit of your team, the season of your dreams. Looking for the victory, we've got what you need. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. I am the king of home entertainment, or the uh, Archduke at least. Because I have Cox Digital Cable, Cox has more high-def choices than ever before. And nearly all the high-def programming is free. How cool is that? Cox has great movies and sports programming in high-def. Plus an interactive program guide that helps you find what you want, when you want. All with no equipment to buy or long-term contract required. You just can't get all that with satellite. Garland now with that power wing T formation. We pitch it back. There's Davis. He gets outside as a first down inside the 45 or close to it at the 42 to carry in Cuba. We have called the safeties a lot. Nobody on the defensive line has been able to get any penetration because Garland comes at you. They pound on you, and they have third down and short right here. Yeah, this is John Tyler, uh, John Tyler-esque, if you will, from back in the late 90s when they had that freight train going. Uh, no backside help that time for Stripling as he gets inside to disrupt the play briefly, but he doesn't get help from the backside until Cuba comes up to help uh, wrap up the tackle. So Lee gets on the board first in the 20-yard screen pass, and Garland then answers with the long 56-yard touchdown run from Darius Borders, who is averaging almost eight yards a carry. Third in the yard for the Owls. Crosby, the quarterback, up the middle, first down, Davis close to the 40. Jason Stripling was there, along with the bottom of the pile is 27, Dominique Van Zandt and McKenzie and Sherfield, but Garland, this is what they want to do, soak the clock, keep the Lee offense off the field, but quite frankly, of the explosiveness so far, it's been the Garland offense. Yeah, they're getting a nice push at the line of scrimmage and pushing back the Lee interior and linebacker crew, and this is just what they want to do. What they want to do is all of a sudden then bang a nice pass play on you that they can get you lulled to sleep that they're running the ball all the time. Receiver splits to the near side, that is 19 for, excuse me, 18, that's Matt Bailey, the senior. Wingback is 23, Malcolm Williams. They run it up the gut, not much there, but again, oh, he does get a lot. My goodness, he rolls and pulls and tugs for four yards and a play up the gut. Nice, tough run from Borders. Check that, that was Davis, and he got down to the 37 for three. And they're content if they can pick up three or four on every game because they're just wearing down the interior of the lead defense. Lee does a great job of hitting at the point of attack on that play, but they don't wrap up well. It's kind of a reminiscent of the way Vondrell McGee broke a long touchdown earlier in the season at Longview. Second down and seven with 11 minutes now, counting first half. Second quarter, we're tied at seven. The center is Carlos Perez, a 2.30 sophomore. Tight end to the near side is Bowen. Here's Crosby, back to Davis, gets outside. No, he does not, as Cole skates and then Jacoby McKenzie. I tell you what, Cole skates may have saved a big chunk again on a great job of tugging on the jersey. He just whips the blocker and gets right by him. Just great pursuit angle for Cole skates, and then he holds on for dear life as he gets uh, help from the backside from Van Zant and company to wrap up the running back. It is third down, it's a big defensive play. A little noise would help here. Third and eight, there you go at the lead 38 yard line. 7-7 seven, seven tied, two receivers far side, one near side, Crosby in the shotgun. And there's movement. Now the center moved his head. Jacoby McKenzie jumped offside, then the left tackle then jumped as well. It all depends on who they think drew who offside. But actually, I thought the center may all oh, they're going to call it against Robert E. Lee on a McKenzie jumping offside. The center moved his head dramatically, and instead of third down and eight, it is now second. It's now third and two. Third pre-snap penalty against Robert E. Lee. Well, it's just not concentrating, and uh, he, he gave in to the fake of the center, and the center did that and did a very nice job of it. He raised his head up very quickly and uh, into the neutral zone. Now what you tackle. do is you take a team that doesn't like third down long, and you put them right into their territory, which is four down territory, on third and three here at the Lee 33-yard line. Double tight set. 
Crosby, pitch back to Davis, first down, down to the 30, and the offsides against McKenzie is costly, a first down stop here at the 30-yard line and a gain of four. Well, they get a surge up front, Perez the center and Hayes and Oleg Badu, the guard and tackle respectively, make a nice push, enabling the running back to pick up the necessary yardage. James Wilson is in, the 6'1", 230 senior at defensive end. As Garland, now 9.38 to go first half, on the lead 28 or 29 and a half yard line. Boy, it was third and eight, you had him in the shotgun, which is where you want him. If they make a play there, you just say, okay, you make a play. Now you got him in the hammer. Tight end, far side, right in the middle of the field, up the gut, this is Reinhard Weiss. Lots of players in red that time. Van Zandt, De Haven were there. Also, Uzel was there. Matt Uzel is really starting to get a lot of time. He has 44 tackles entering this game as a backup linebacker, gain of two. Uh, and he only had like two starts there earlier in the season. Uh, Garland gets another nice push, and they're real content to burn clock, too, as this drive is uh, tipped over the three-minute mark. Here's I'll tell you how serious it is inside. Sam Banks and Saron Black, remember, were playing some tackle early on. Banks was in on that play. Now Gabriel Lacey, a 256 tackle. Second and eight. Crosby, the quarterback. Play action far side. Has a receiver open. Caught it. 20 first down. Knocked down by Cuba at the 18-yard line. That was Nick Mitchell. Very nice job. Gain of 10 yards and a first down Crosby. That's Reinhard Weiss out of the backfield making the catch. And he gets hammered, but he holds onto the ball and picks up a first down for Garland. And they are playing keep away. This is exactly what Mike Owens was concerned with, was them playing keep away. Preston Hill checks in at safety, and so does Lance Heap, and Cuba and Mitchell come out. First and 10, Garland at the lead 18-yard line with 8.38 to go in the first half, tied at seven. Up the gut, Reinhard Weiss, not much there, does lean forward. It seems like the running backs of Garland when they are hit, are leaning, and Lee's not pushing them back very often. Back into the sub, into the backfield, gain of about two. That's good coaching and great technique to pick up leverage and just lean forward and put your body in a full extension to pick up whatever necessary yardage that you can. Second down, Garland at the least 17 yard line with 8.15 to go. Remember, this drive started back in the first quarter. Garland, second down, eight. Far side Bailey, play clock under 10. Crosby, motion, ring back reverse. That's Borders. He's leaning forward and he will get more yardage again at the end of the run. Again, Garland, when they get stopped, they're the ones leaning forward. Heap on the stop for Robert E. Lee. That's when you got to get a surge on the defense and push him backwards. He got two extra yards after the play was almost over and got four. Well, Lee gets a little bit better job of getting some pursuit, but uh, Davis is able to cut back inside against the grain. He leans on a couple of his offensive linemen and pushes forward and has a nice five yards. He had about two, then he yep. had three, then he had four, then he had five. A nice tough run from Borders. 5'8", 180 senior. Garland taking that play clock every time down inside 10 seconds. Crosby on third and four. Outside Borders, bounces outside at the 10, at the five. First down at the five. Preston Hill on the stop of the first and goal. Garland and a gain of eight tough yards and a nice play from Borders again to bounce outside. And he shows great acceleration. He sees it's bottled up along the line of scrimmage as Lee does a better job, but then he just darts outside and it takes the backup safety, Preston Hill, to come up and save the touchdown on the tackle. There is no penetration right no. now and you have to have penetration when you're running teams, when they're running cross bucks and wing reverses and things like that. And now they have the ball at the lead five, and there's seven minutes in clock counting, second quarter. That defense is starting to get a little tired here on a very well-designed play, calling a drive from Garland's Jeff Jordan. The offensive coordinator is Derek Alford. This is Reinhard Weiss, and Paul Skates lights him up. There's a little penetration. Nothing there, and I tell you what, give Reinhard Weiss credit for holding on to the football because he took an ear hole. Well, he got decked hard by number two. Skates just beats the left tackle and is right there to meet him at the line of scrimmage. He gets penetration, and Lee needs that several more times here to hold Garland at bay. So 6.22 to go. This has taken over half of a quarter on this drive. They're second down and goal at the Lee five-yard line. 
started the drive at the end of the first quarter. There is exactly 6.10 to go in the second quarter. Crosby spit black and Rice and Border. Will try to throw, has to scramble, throws it, tipped in the air by guess who? Cole Skates. And if he could have got a break on the tip, he would have gone about 90. Cole Skates has made two huge plays in the defensive end for Robert E. Lee. It's now third and goal. He's being very disruptive. He's just getting past the block, and that time it was designed to let linebackers release as they were going to try a little flare or a little screen pass out in the flat, but it never happened. But Cole Skates is there to tip it in the air and show great athleticism. Six minutes to go in the third, second quarter. We are tied at seven. Garland at the lead five-yard line. Third and goal. Cole Skates knocked twice down, tipped the ball down, and timeout Garland. Huge play as Lee's defense hoping to hold him to a field goal. We're back in 30 seconds on KTBB. Okay, we'd like you to try two frozen lattes. One is from a national chain of coffee shops, and the other is new from Dairy Queen. Mm. This one's fantastic. Looks like you chose the new DQ Mulatte. Great. Mm. Okay, you can give it back now. Mm. Test is over. Let it go. No! The new DQ Mulatte Frozen Blended Coffee, made with creamy DQ soft serve in three tempting flavors. Grab one and DQ something different. Likes it a lot. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're going to go to clear helmet so our racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on that. And I'm out of here. Fellas, you're out of your mind. That's not where are you going? Mind. Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? Six minutes to go in the second quarter on an overcast day at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium in Tyler. I'm David Smoke with Randy Johnson. Gary Ainsworth as well in the booth. Our spotter, Craig Smoke in the sidelines. Engineer is Mike LaRue and our producer is Justin Brinker. Third and goal as Lee's defense trying to shut down this Garland Owls offense which is taking the ball, sucked out the clock, and also moved the ball at the same time. This will be the 14th play on this current drive. This marks down the field in over six minutes now as a, they took the ball from the 15 second mark in the first quarter, and here we go. Third and goal. Crosby will go shotgun with Weiss, the up back. Tight end is on the far side. Lead with a four-man front, bad snap. Crosby will try to throw. Rolls to the far side. DeHaven tries to get in his face, and he's sacked. Warren DeHaven and Cole Skates has just made three huge defensive plays in one series. Well, let's credit the secondary in that play, David. They picked up the three receivers going out in, into the end zone on, for the pass movement for Garland, and Lee just does a great job of coverage. And then all of a sudden, here comes number two and 44 to wrap up on uh, Crosby and sack him for a loss. The closing speed of Cole Skates that time, and DeHaven was just enough there where he had to also get hemmed in a little bit. Field goal attempt in five. This will be 29 yards. McCoy is the holder. Snap, kick up, and the kick is... Good, he doesn't miss many. Matt Fodge has given Garland the lead. 10-7 with 5.17 to go. First half at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium and Tyler, we're back in 60 seconds. Here's a question. If you needed your insurance, who would you call? Not the name of the company, but the name of the person. You've got two seconds. Coming up blank, you may want to consider Allstate. You'd have a local agent you can count on, a licensed professional whose name you know not just a number. You deserve a relationship with a real person. For all your insurance needs, call the McIntyre Insurance Agency in the Albertson Shopping Center. To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. Matt Fodge, whose 10th field goal of the year is given Garland the lead, will kick off at his 40-yard line heading east. The Garland scoring summary, David, 15 plays, 68 yards. It's 6.32 off the clock, and they take the lead on uh, Fodge's field goal. Fodge will kick off. Last time he sent Tony Bush six yards deep in the end zone. 
He's also pushed it one time. He kicks this one high and very deep. I and mean, you can see why he's going Division One. Bush at the one, 5'10. Tries to bounce outside and he's drilled down at the 13. Great coverage by Justin Williams, the senior. And Lee will start deep in their own territory with 5'10 to go in the first half, down by a field goal. And this team, Lee has not trailed very often this year. Not often at all, especially at halftime, although they did trail Lufkin by a point earlier. And uh, let's see what they're made of offensively. And if they can uh, keep from having those mental mistakes and the sloppy play, let's see if they can overcome that. The defense bent and bent and bent and bent and almost broke, but did not, and they give up just three. Thank you to Cole Skates there. First down, lead tight end far side up the middle. Peyton Price lost a yard. Little fullback counter. Lost two yards on a play up the middle back to the 11 in Garland's defense, number 47, Antoine. The linebacker McCoy, or the, the cornerback McCoy and the linebacker Horn ate that up, a loss of two. We'll give credit to Brandon Antoine up front and Brian Jones. They just blew the line of scrimmage up and were able to get penetration and uh, that quick hitter, that quick tear play really uh, does not work at all for Lee and it really hasn't worked but one time today. You gotta have aggressive pay players, which Garland does. The problem is, is they're whipping the blocks on the running plays, defensively against the pass, Lee has been able to, so far, control the line of scrimmage. And here comes a throw here with Josh back in his end zone. Now rolls near side. Throw sideline, caught, fleet, 15. Ball comes loose at the 20. He got about six or seven yards in the play. And another ball knocked loose from Tyler Fleet. Nice job by Josh to find the safety valve out to the 20-yard line and a gain of seven Tyler yards. Give him eight. Well, he finds him, uh, he's actually just the safety valve, and the inside is downfield. Simpson is covered well by the cornerback on the near side. That would be number two out there. Desmond Baker does a great job of coverage, and uh, Josh Hill just has to find the safety valve for a short game. Going to have to throw the football today a lot, it looks like, to have a chance to win this game or at least even move the ball on that Garland House defense. Which again, it's giving up just 14 and a half points per game and less than 270 on the ground and in through the air. Here's third and four. Josh Hill, play action, bootleg, gets around the corner, 20, first down, 25, breaks a tackle, 30, gets a block, 40. At the goal in 30, 20, 10, five, down at the two, down at the two, down at the two. Josh Hill breaks a tackle and goes 77 yards inside the Garland five. And it looked like he came up lame slightly at about the 20, trying to outrun the pursuit of Garland down the sideline, but he makes a nifty move at the 26 yard line to get past three white shirted Garland owls. And then he sets sail down the sideline and he's caught from behind by number six on the play, actually number two, Desmond Baker and Devin McDowell as well. Yeah, you, when you're having trouble, seniors have to step up. Cole skates it on defense along with DeHaven and Josh Hill just did there because that looked like a simple five or six yard run. He lost his shoe on the run okay. is what happened. The ball at the two and a half. First and goal, power on. T.Y. Does he get the call? Touchdown! Off a left tackle behind Saron Black and Sam Banks and a great lead block from Brad Royal and Robert E. Lee responds for the touchdown drive. They get an excellent push, two nice running plays. Give credit up front to the human island. Black just buries on number 72 up front. That would be Cedric Brown, whips him at the line of scrimmage, allowing T.Y. to dance in the end zone for six. 77 yard run from Josh Hill and the two and a half yard run from T.Y. to wrap up the drive and Cole Skate set to kick off. Uh, kick the extra point. Snap comes from Giles. Hill with the hold, Cole with the kick, and it is good. Got a feeling this is playoff football. <laughs> 14 to 10, Robert E. Lee with 3.43 to go in the first half, and we're back in 60 seconds on KTBB. The Tyler Independent School District employs 2,600 and serves over 17,500 students with a primary mission to ensure the academic success of every student and also is committed to fiscal responsibility, ranking among the top districts in the state for percentage of budget spent on instruction and receiving the prestigious Superior Financial Rating from the Texas Education Agency. We're committed to improvement, not only because it's what the people of Tyler expect, but because it's what the people of Tyler deserve. For the best treats and eats and hottest winning in Texas, you gotta go to DQ. 
Only DQ's got the classic four-piece all-white chicken strip country basket served with fries, Texas toast, and the best green gravy anywhere for just $3.99. Only DQ's got a cool creamy banana split made with DQ soft serve for $1.99. And only DQ's got the peel away giveaway game where you can win food, treat prizes, or your chance to win a brand new Dodge Ram 1500 Lone Star Edition pickup. It has been a play where both teams, when they fell behind, responded with 91 and then 87 yard drives. 3.43 to go now in the first half. It's 14 to 10, Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee scoring summary. Four plays, 87 yards and 127. The key play, the 77 yard bootleg run from Josh Hill and the two yard touchdown run from Tyron Ross. John Giles got a big block on the long run from Josh Hill. Now kicking off Micah Johnson from his 40 on the east side of the end zone. Approaches the soccer style kicker high and pretty deep. This is Weiss. They've, oh, no, it's not. It's not Weiss. It's Davis at the 15-10. Breaks a tackle. Gets outside. Tripped up at the 30. Fall loose, but he was down. I think that was Colby Ray who made the stop and a great job because he was on the verge of going loose and Antonio Davis, Caleb Foster was there. Davis with a very nice return though out to the 29 yard line. Well, Lee responds quickly and that may not be a good thing for their defense, David. Uh, they get down the field rather rapidly in less than a minute and a half and now uh, their tired defense from that long 15 play drive prior for Garland uh, is back on the field to see if they can make a stop. There's a player down for Garland. Let me tell you what else we do later on today because we have a lot of things going on. First of all, after our game, after our post-game report, we will join the game between Texas A&M and Texas Tech in progress. That will be the Texas A&M broadcast crew. Meanwhile, on 1490 ESPN Radio in Tyler, we will join the Texas Tech A&M game, the broadcast of Texas Tech in progress. The game on 1490 right now is uh, TJC and Kilgore, and I believe, Justin, you told me it was 21-6. 21-7, Kilgore, who beat Tyler, he split with him early in the year, one trying to win that uh, Southwest Junior College Championship. is 21-7, Kilgore, in that game, I guess, just uh, starting the second half. Devin McDowell, unfortunately, is in a lot of pain and down on the field and now being held off, uh, being taken off the field by the training staff. This is when you have the great trainers, and hopefully Devin McDowell, who's played a, a whale of a game early in this game, the 100 70 pound junior we wish him well number six is being helped off the field and he is their starting safety malcolm williams normally is his backup on the defensive side here comes that garden hammer wing tee down 14 to 10 at their 29 yard line crosby deep pitch back here's four five six yards check carry in cuba stripling shirtfield a bunch of players on every tackle at the bottom is van zant and McKenzie, but he got five, six yards. Cordero Mumphrey was there, but that is a load of a player, number four. Well, what you're getting right now from Lee on defense, they're playing hard, they're just getting pushed back, and Jason Stripling on nearly every play is trying to make an attempt to get uh, some inside pressure as he knives, knives right in from his bandit position. 3.07 to go, first half, 14 to 10, Robert E. Lee and Garland with six yards on first down, they go up the gut, there's another big run, 40, 45, and that's Dante Sloan for a gain of about 15 near midfield, and that looks so simple, but there's some great blocking going on, that was Borders, excuse me, Nick Mitchell knocks him out of bounds, but a huge gain from the 35 to the 47 and a gain of 12. Well, he just busts through, he has an opening, give credit to Scott Hayes and Jeff Oligbadu up front, opening a nice little doorway for him to get through and he squirts through for a big gainer for Garland. Here comes the play in from the sideline with Justin Williams. First down, 2.56 to go as he went out of bounds and Garland gets the clock to stop. At their 47, Lee with a four-man, now six-man front. They go up the middle, nice job. Ricky Sherfield. that is penetration. That is what happens, and Dominique Van Zant was there, and Dante Sloan got maybe a half a yard. Well, that's what they're going to have to continue doing, and of course he had help too from Stripling again, as he, he recognizes exactly what needs to be done. He needs to get backside help, and he had his uh, defensive end to help him that time. Yeah, you got to get the linebackers running down from the backside. He's got to make sure you also make sure the ball's going that way. True, true. Second down, he got nothing at their 47. Far side is McCoy. Second down. Garland down four. Wants to throw, rolls off to the side. 
Now looking for a safety valve, now looking for help, throws it away outside the pocket, well past the line of scrimmage. Great pressure from Sam Banks, Mumphrey, and Lee starting to get, when they throw the ball, great penetration. And it's third and nine, now just don't jump off sides. Well, that's what they're going to have to do, yeah, to keep the mental part in the game, but to get pressure when Garland decides to throw the ball because that is not their strong suit. It's obviously the power running game and uh, big third down by upcoming for the out. Sam Banks going both ways, but you don't see much, and he's doing it today. McKenzie is the tackle. Mumphrey and Sherfield are the ends. 2-11 to go. Crowd on their feet. Lee trying to get a stop here. The quarterback is Crosby. He's thrown for 590 yards and six scores. Four-man front. Perez the center. Takes the snap, back to throw, pass caught, dropped by McCoy. And he had nowhere to go anyway. Here's a flag down, and this is going to be defensive holding against Robert E. Lee, I think. Here comes the flag from the linesman on the far side, and I wonder if they got tied up with the receiver. Jeff Jordan is a good six to eight yards outside the sideline. Number 30 from Garland was also over there in the pattern. Illegal. Oh, that's what it was. Randy. You thought he was holding. I thought he was holding. He was number 30 on the far side to help try to make the tackle, but he's an illegal receiver. Too many men on the field. Okay. Okay. Play ought to be uh, obviously declined. Fourth down. Okay, so get up and give the defense a little cheer here. They stopped him again. That ball was right in the chest of McCoy. I don't know what the Garland deep uh, coaches are complaining about because it still would have been an incomplete pass. And what they were saying maybe is that number 30, Gutierrez, was somewhere an illegal man downfield. I still don't remember. I don't exactly know what the call, but it's fourth down here. And Lee will send Tony Bush back at his 10. Fodge, remember, watch for the fake at about this spot. They have three up men from the 48. Snap to Fodge. Pressure, gets it off and turns it over. Nice punt. Bush will feel it at his 20 and go down on the knee very smartly right there. Nice coverage punt from Matt Fodge. And Lee with 158 to go. Slows down the Garland offense there. 34-yard punt, one-yard return from Tony Bush, and Lee has it at the 20. And they have plenty of time to get downfield with that explosive offense that they bring out. They haven't been able to run the ball real well inside, but they've done it outside, and we can expect to see T.Y. getting some carries outside here, too, and maybe a pass or two th uh, thrown towards Walter Simpson. Minute 58 to go. It is Williams' far side. Lee at their 20 left hash mark moving towards the west side. They go stretch to T.Y. Here's a flag. This is going to come back, and he gets about seven or eight. His best play of the day, and that thing was thrown as soon as they snapped it. The umpire that time, A.J. Lopez, so he saw something early, and we, we talked about the stretch play against on Lee's offensive line. It, it takes a long time to develop, and it cost him 10 yards. Rather interesting, we have not seen any calls against the offense until we saw the one against Garland and immediately one against Robert E. Lee. Well, that's just the uh, pressure up front from Garland, knocking back Larman, and Larman, it appears to be the culprit, and it might have been Banks, too, as they were both with that defensive lineman who pushed him back. Here's the problem, though, Randy. Now you have the ball with a minute 53 to go. You have second down and three. Lee's able to throw the ball, maybe get some points out of it. Now Garland's defense would love to shut it down here and possibly get the ball back with the cannon Big of the kicker in Matt Fox. So another penalty, four against Lee for 25 yards. And Lee gets a man on late, that is John Williams. He's in the slot with Simpson this way as well. Be careful down inside your own red zone and Josh will throw. Pumps going deep to Tony Bush. There's nobody there but a Garland player and it's intercepted. Unbelievable, there were two players back there and both were wearing white jerseys. And J.J. McCoy and Josh pumped it, and Bush did not get free. And that was an easy pick for McCoy. And they have the ball right where we just talked about, Randy, at midfield with a minute 25 to go. Well, it appeared that Bush pulled up on the route and just stopped at about the 33-yard line. The two defensive backs kept following the pass. And uh, one of them uh, makes a great athletic play to get to it. McCoy just a superb cornerback, and uh, he makes a big play for Garland. Here Second interception for Josh, and both of them have been McCoy. Isn't that right? Yep, he had a pick earlier, and he had another one there, and he did a great job of almost like a wide receiver getting his feet down in bounds. Lee going for the jugular from their 10-yard line. From midfield, minute 25, in the shotgun. Tim Crosby runs the quarterback draw, tries to find a seam, and gets about four. Nice job by Lee defensively. 
after a gain of four down to the 46 to carry in Cuba at the end. And I think you'll see number two at the bottom of the pile for Robert E. Lee and also 53 McKenzie. Well, one thing's for sure, the pace of the game is at Garland's, and it's at their it's at their speed it's where they want to run the ball. And the two turnovers for Lee in the first half have been huge for Garland. Second down and six at the 46 of Lee. Crosby in the shotgun. The junior, here comes a flag, and Al Lopez, or A.J. Lopez, is getting pretty busy, and this could be a procedure call. And I think, I tell you what the center is doing, he seems to be jerking his head right before the snap. You can do that to an extent unless you're trying to draw somebody off sides, and that time he gets caught. And it also may have been somebody moving early. 53 seconds, clock is important. We're in a 14 to 10 lead with the lead. Five yard procedure call. And I think that's the first penalty against, second penalty against the Owls. Thank you, Randy. Justin Williams, man-to-man -man with Micah Johnson near side. Crosby runs the quarterback draw. Tripped up from Jacoby McKenzie. What a nice play from 53. And he just rode that center that time and got down on the ankles and lost him two yards. There's third down. Speed pursuit, getting low angle up at the line of scrimmage. McKenzie just beats the center and the left guard and dives for the ankles up Crosby and picks him off as he can't get around the corner and Lee's making great plays now. That's what they need. They need that pursuit and that execution on the line of scrimmage. We will hear from Mike Owens at halftime. And you know what? Garland has let this clock run down. They had great field position. Shotgun, Crosby runs the quarterback draw. Nothing. Sherfield wrapped him up after McKenzie and Van Zant were there and that will end the first half. Garland had great field position and didn't try to do much with it. Robert E. Lee's defense got a big hole down near the end zone, and now they get the touchdown after the huge run from Josh Hill, and here's Craig with Mike Owens. Coach Owens, uh, Garland's been pounding the ball like the old JT offense. They've been taking a lot of time off the clock, but your defense, Cole Skates, and others have stepped up and played pretty well. Yeah, they played pretty well, and dead gum good thing, because we're not doing anything on offense. We are the most out of space thing I've ever seen. I, we're going to have to get all this straight. We can't see anybody. we got receivers running wide open, and we're not getting the ball to them. I'd appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. That's from Mike Owens. Lee 14, Garland 10. Back with more of our halftime brought to you by Kid Jones Convenience Scores. Okay, we'd like you to try two frozen lattes. One is from a national chain of coffee shops, and the other is new from Dairy Queen. Mmm. This one's fantastic. Looks like you chose the new DQ Mulatte. Great. Mmm. Okay, you can give it back now. Mm. The test is over. Let it go. No! <laughs> The new DQ Mulatte Frozen Blended Coffee, made with creamy DQ soft serve in three tempting flavors. Grab one and DQ something different. Likes it a lot. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're going to go to clear helmets so our racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on that. And I'm out of here. Fellas, out of your mind. That's not where are you going? Right. Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? Car shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in doing a spectacular halftime show brought to you by Robert E. Lee High School. We invite you to sit back and enjoy the incredible Southern Bell drill team and the fabulous Red Raider Band. Tomlinson and Courtney Tomlinson. The Bell Guards. Nick 
Dark Alex Pierce, Gray Dyer, Wesley Ardwell, Brianna Anderson, Crystal Hart, and Nick Swain. a colorful star routine to the music in a young man's mind. Independent School District now proudly present the pride of Robert E. Lee, the Red Raider Marching Band. Under the real direction of head drum major Adrian Jones, assistant drum majors Brian Kelly and Mondale Onua, the Red Raider Band takes you back to an old Hollis Santana favorite, Evil Way.
afternoon, sir. Bill Butler, how are you? Good. Good? Well, prepare to be great, my friend. I present the Turbo Suck 3000. Actually, you know, my show's about to start. So Don't worry, Dave. The Cox DVR is set to record every episode. You can watch it when he's done. Perfect. I'll just need an outlet. There you go. Watch your favorite shows on your schedule with the DVR from Cox. TV waits for you. Now you can get into the deep crevices here in the corner. Hi, I'm Becky Martin. I've been with TISD for 19 years, and I teach English here at Robert E. Lee, and you're watching TISD Football on Cox. This also is going to come down to Lee's defense getting fed up with somebody jamming the ball down their throat. Now, we've got to remember now, 91 of the 160 yards in total offense was on one drive. But Lee, 87 of their 160 yards is on one drive. And these teams have mirrored each other all year long. I tell you what, I love to see Lee get up and get jacked up a little bit more on defense. They did have a couple of nice uh, stops, though, at the end of the first half. And Cole Skate, for the, if they come back, if they win this game, if Lee wins this game, remember the three consecutive plays from Cole with help from Warren DeHaven as well. Uh, at the end of the uh, first half. 14 to 10, Lee will be back with the second half kickoff in one minute on News Talk 600 KTBB. This has been your Kit Jones Convenience Store's Halftime Report. Okay, we'd like you to try two frozen lattes. One is from a national chain of coffee shops and the other is new from Dairy Queen. Mm. This one's fantastic. Looks like you chose the new DQ Mulatte. Great. Mm. Okay, you can give it back now. Test is over, let go. The new DQ Mulatte Frozen Blended Coffee. Made with creamy DQ soft serve in three tempting flavors. Grab one and DQ something different. Likes it a lot. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're going to go to clear helmets so racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on it. And I'm out of here. Fellas, out of your mind. That's not where are you going? Mind. Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? Here's a question. If you needed your insurance, who would you call? Not the name of the company, but the name of the person. You've got two seconds. Coming up blank, you may want to consider Allstate. You'd have a local agent you can count on, a licensed professional whose name you know, not just a number. You deserve a relationship with a real person. For all your insurance needs, call the McIntyre Insurance Agency in the Albertson Shopping Center. Micah Johnson has a pick in this game, set to kick off for Lee from the east side of the end zone, 14 to 10 Red Raiders. Craig Smoke has an injury update on the Robert E. Lee. Yeah, earlier in the first half, uh, Tony Bush came off the field looking a little bit dazed. Just now coming back on the field, Tony Bush was uh, walking out by himself instead of running on the field with the team. And it turns out he's got a minor concussion, so Tony Bush is unavailable for the rest of the game. Wow. He is their punt returner. He is also their speed threat on the in the passing game. So Jonathan Williams is going to have to come up big here for Robert E. Lee in the second half, along with Simpson, which is what Kerry mentioned. Here's Antonio Davis at the 15. It's kind of a short kick. Gets outside, 25, 30, 35, 40. Near midfield, runs over Johnson, the, court, the, the uh, safety valve, and well, that's not a good way to start the second half. The give team with the likes to pound the ball, great field position outside the 40-yard line to the 45. And again, he just kind of got outside. There was no containment on the far side of the coverage team. Offensively for Garland, it's Tim Crosby, the junior quarterback. They have all sorts of running backs. Reinhard Weiss, the fullback with Darius Borders, the tailback. We'll see a lot of Dante Sloan and Antonio Davis. Receivers are Matt Bailey and Matt Gutierrez and Matt Nate Bow in the tight end. Here's the wing tee. This is Weiss, right tackle. This time Lee swarms him. Loss got about a yard. Warren DeHaven, Stripling was there. Sherfield as well. Up front, it's Brummett, Greider, Perez, Hayes, and Ugly Alegbadu. Uh, Jeff Alegbadu is the uh, right tackle, 270 senior. Lee up front, Sherfield and Mumford, the defensive ends. McKenzie, the tackle. Skates to Haven and Van Zant, the linebackers. We also see a lot of Matt Uzel. The corners are Nicholson and Johnson. 
Safeties are Mitchell, Cuba, and Stripling. Second down, this is Borders, tries to bounce it outside. Cole Skates gets to him, and then Matt Uzel, and then ripped out of bounds at the end by Nick Mitchell in a loss of a couple of yards. Well, the pursuit is there again. Cole Skates just beats the left tackle and just is there in the backfield to force the running back outside, grabs a hold of him. Then he gets three or four lead defenders there to push him out of bounds. And Garland's Borders is down on the sideline where that play came out. Skates forced him outside. And then Matt Uzel got a hold of him, and he was cleaned up by Nick Mitchell at the end, who has great perimeter speed. And we do hope that the Borders is okay, the senior, who has had a huge first half with six carries for 88 yards and the 56-yard touchdown. So they'll take a break here, 14 to 10. Lee, and we'll keep it here as well. So the Tony Bush injury will not play in the second half. He is a, a weapon for them, Randy, because he's also in the kickoff return game. Well, he does uh, has some design runs from his uh, wing back wide receiver position as well. Lee's defense has come out jacked up here in the second half as they're pumped up and down, and they force Garland into a long third down play. Seems like the crowd's jacked up too. Yeah. Third and 11 at the 44. Garland with the opening possession of the second half. Here's a little counter. They got first down, no. Not close to it. To carry in Cuba may have saved the first down. That's a very nice, well-designed play to Gutierrez and Jason Stripling also around there. And he got enough to where Jeff Jordan has a decision on fourth and two at the lead 47-yard line. It looks like they may go for it. That is. They're going for it. It's not even a decision. They, they're not even thinking about it. That's how powerful their offensive feel like they are so confident with the running game. Borders back in the game on fourth down and about a yard and a half. Crosby, wing T. Pitch back, very close, he did not make it. Robert E. Lee's defense, get up and yell. Warren DeHaven, Stripling, and a lot of other folks at the bottom of the pile with Dominique Van Zandt, he's a yard short of the first down. And Uzel is there too to polish him off. Just They just blitzed the inside and made a fantastic move on the offensive line, and Garland could not hold him out, and Lee has a big fourth down stop to start the second half. That's gotta be a slap in the face to the defense that on fourth and two, from the lead 47 that they go for it, but that's kind of team Garland who's got a great offense on the pound and they have, you can want, you know, you can see why Jeff may have want to go for it there. Now can Lee's offense take advantage of great field position? T.Y. is the deep back, tight end far side left hash mark. Center snap, outside T.Y. gets a block, cuts it up against the grain and nothing there. Great job by Garland to wrap him up, he almost he almost found a seam on the cutback, but Rock Morgan, the middle linebacker, the senior with a great play and a, a gain of a yard. They had help from John Murphy. They did not allow Tyrone to cut back against the grain, which he does so well, waiting on a block, and he has great vision, but two or three white shirts and black hats are there for the Garland Owls. So second down and nine for Robert E. Lee, and T.Y. has without question been held in check. He has seven carries for three yards. The all-time leading rusher in Lee history. Right hash mark, second and nine. Tight end far side, Josh Hill rolls to the near side. Little swing pattern out to Giles at midfield and gets about three. Terrence Henderson was there. At that time he was looking for Simpson, but great coverage on the other side from Baker and Johnson, and he had to go to the outlet, and that was a gain of three to Giles. Once again, the Robert E. Lee offensive line giving great protection to their quarterback, and by design, he just alertly goes to the flat to his uh, safety valve in the tight end, John Giles, who's floating out there, and he picks up a small gain. Uh, Lee has a, now a big third down upcoming game. Third down and six. Lee right at midfield, leading 14 to 10, third quarter, 9.06 to go. Josh, straight drop, sideline. Will Simpson, caught it but short of the first down. And now guess what? If you go for it on fourth down, we might go for it on fourth down if you're thinking between the years of Mike O and Simpson got five and a half. Lee at the 45 and they need the 44. Just a little under one yard straight in front of me. And uh, the Lee offensive, is offensive line and the offense out in the field is urging the fans up and here we go, David. Well, Garland's fans are up in their black and gold. Lee in their black and red. Fourth down at the Garland, 44 and a half. Jeff Jordan went for it, he was stopped. Lee will go for it at the 44. Mike Owens, what play do you call here? Hill, eight man front, quarterback, keep, leans forward, he got it. First down, Robert E. Lee. 
And a give credit to the save, the center, Blake Lorman, with a nice lead block along with Culp and Banks as well. A quick snap for Josh Hill. He doesn't waste any time. He gets in behind the center and just gets the ball and rides his rear end off to the left side behind Banks as well. And they get the necessary push, and Lee gets their fourth down conversion. So, they got, of course, they needed only about a half a yard. They're at the 43, and Josh got two. Josh Hill has three carries for 81 yards in the electrifying 77-yarder to set up the go-ahead score. Williams far side, the H-back is Jason Williams. Offset on, split backs actually. Josh, wing back fake reverse. He wants to throw it, now goes sideline to Preston. Uh, check that, that's Peyton Price for only a couple. He had Tyrone in the middle, Williams deep, and John Giles on a flare pattern, but he didn't have any time to throw it back that way. He got two. The offensive line holds up just enough to keep Brandon Antoine and Cedric Brown from converging on Josh Hill as he finds Price, his uh, uh, safety valve to the right side for the short game. Seven minutes, 33 seconds. Clock is ticking now, second down and eight. Robert E. Lee at the Garland, 41. And yards are hard to come by today for an offense that has averaged 38.6 points per game and 440 yards per game. Offset on, second down and eight. Simpson in the slot and Josh will throw again. In the pocket, throwing deep, Giles, pass, incomplete. Double coverage, but he had a little seam. He also had a man deep in the middle and that looked like Walter Simpson. The safety may have come over off of him and here comes another third and eight for Robert E. Lee. And John Murphy, the safety for Garland, picks up on Giles as well as he went to the left side to, to try to pick up on Walter Simpson. Then he comes back and he joins Desmond Baker, the quarterback, on coverage. And the pass is just a little bit overthrown for John Giles. Lee has tried to throw the ball deep quite a bit. They've not had any success with it. They've had more success throwing underneath what is, again, about a 10 or 12 Yard umbrella. They need eight here. Third and eight at the Garland 41. Defense made a play. Can the offense answer? Josh back to throw. Sets up in the pocket. Now will run. Now wants to throw to T.Y. Now he's in trouble. Gets around a receiver. Now scrambles and steps out of bounds. Oh, he had T.Y. open for just a second but he just couldn't pull the trigger early enough. And again, there was nobody underneath. Everybody was downfield. And here's a fourth down and Lee will punt the ball deep in the Garland territory. Well, the line does their job. Josh just has to rattle outside and great coverage for the Garland secondary. They've done it time and again, and they, they just can't make the completion. Well, they they're can't, trying, yeah. everybody was deep in that pattern again. And main reason for that at the end was of course, when you start running around, people are running around. That was not the initial. He was trying to go underneath on the initial three. Fourth down, Lee at the 41 of Garland. The Garland defense with a huge hole there. Back to punt is Hill. Takes the snap. Has the time, kicks it, high wobbly kick, fielded at the 10. And knocked down with a nice hit at the 15-yard line by Matt Uzel. No, Mason was there, 85, Michael Mason. 31-yard punt, four-yard return, and Garland starts at their 15-yard line with 6.46 to go, third quarter, 14 to 10, Robert E. Lee. And Robert E. Lee has wrestled the field position more thus far in the second half. What they need to do now is get a nice three and out, which they haven't had but one, and that was the initial drive of the game for Garland. Actually, they made the interception off that one on the first play. Garland split backs the wing T hammer. First and 10 at their 15, up the middle, there's the fullback. Sloan for five, six tough yards. Cuba was there, but he got seven yards and a quick hitter up the gut. And that's Dr. Sloan, a 5'11", 200 pound junior. Garland's been chipping away at the outsides, running the ball on the perimeter on their misdirection and their power wing T set. And they come back with a quick blast play and Lee gets pushed back by the Garland line on that one. Second down, he got eight, in fact, eight yards for Sloan. He has now four carries for 35 yards. At, the, at their own 23. Here comes the wing back counter. This is Borders, tries to stretch it out wide and go. Oh, there's a holding, nope, he didn't get it. Boy, Jason Stripling had a jersey coming off and a first down. De Haven and Mitchell were there. It looked like they had him hemmed in in the backfield, but he picks up a first down to the 27, the gain of four. It looked like Jeff Ulugbadu had a hold and he did have a grasp on Stripling, Stripling uh, frantically trying to get away, but he helps to push the play further outside with Warren DeHaven up to wrap up the running back. So a big first down for the Garland Owls at their 27 yard line. Tight end far side, right hash mark, and Crosby the quarterback. He runs play action. He's got a tight end deep, he overshoots him. Nice coverage from Mitchell. Nick was there, but he did get a step on him. That's Nate Bowen, the 228 senior, 
who has caught one pass this year, and Tim Crosby throws it incomplete at second down and 10. Well, if you can force Garland to have to throw the football, it's real trouble for them because they just don't seem to have the same type of uh, array throwing the ball as they do running the ball and uh, Lee makes a good stop on first down. Well, they do a good job when they're running the ball really, really well because yeah, they go play action because Fodge is, uh, I mean, Crosby is thrown for six touchdowns. He averages 20 yards per completion. Up the middle, the fullback, Sloan, dances around and nudges out to the 31, maybe two. Got about four. Van Zant and Stripling were there. Matt Uzell at the bottom of the pile as well as Mumphrey. And it's third and seven. Here's another big one coming up here. Since their long 15 play drive that resulted in a field goal, Lee has done a better job of uh, containing Garland as well. So here's third and six, and now the fans on their feet. The defense, maybe they can feel that. I don't know. Garland fans starting to rise. Third and six outs at their 31, down four. Five and a half to go, third quarter. Gutierrez in motion. Here comes play action. In trouble. Now has to dance around. Does he get loose? No, he does not. Jason Stripling sacks him for a loss of two. Great pressure to cause the trouble. Number 40 was Ricky Sherfield. He had help, too, from an array of Red Raider defenders, including Uzel and Van Zant too, as they put the pressure on the quarterback, forcing him out wide. He, he managed to squirm away and get back to the middle of the field where Stripling stands him up. Fodge back to kick. Remember now, Micah Johnson fielding the punch because of Tony Bush's injury. He has a couple of returns for 49 yards. One of them against Horn that set up a score. The snap will come from Brian Jones. Fodge with a high wobbly punt. Let's see where it hits. At the lead 40, John Johnson picks it up at the 35. Sideline and wrapped up right there by a bunch of Garland Owls at the 42-yard line. And Fodge has really had trouble turning the ball over, averaging 33-3 a punt on the year. 34 there right at his average and a nice job by Micah to pick that up and get six more. Alertly picking it up and uh, it bounced right to him. A, fortu a fortuitous bounce. He alertly grabs it and runs it near side and gets some additional yardage uh, beyond uh, Lee's own 42. Well, Lee's offense had great field position last time because of the uh, stop. defensive stop. What will they do here? Bailey is the center, the junior at the 42. Josh Hill, double tight set, will go play action, bootleg, gets a peel block, 40, 45. Midfield, runs over the corner, first down. He got into the head that time, and what a peel block from Andrew Bailey, and a gain of 12 yards and a first down, and Johnson on the stop, Tyler Fleet with a nice block down field. Well, that's two times they've run that play, and it, it's uh, been wide open both times, but credit the blocking, as you mentioned, uh, Andrew Bailey just levels uh, number 47, Antoine, and pushes him back in a, a nice gainer for the first down. Very few possessions. They are all precious. Lee at the 41, or 6, excuse me, of Garland. Bailey the center. First and 10. Simpson near side. Two men in the slot. Williams and Price. They want run back. Williams outside. No. Oh, what a great job. That is a great play by 45. Number 45, Brian Jones, who's already committed to play at University of Louisiana Monroe, knocks down Jason Williams for a loss of two in his second and 12. Yeah, he pushes back Brian Colt and just levels him and gets Jason before he can get out wide. He had uh, big number 79 leading the way, but he can't get to him in a nice individual defensive effort from the Garland Dow senior. If you take Josh Hill's 77-yard run and all his other stuff out, 14 carries for 18 yards from Hill, Williams, and Price. Second and 12 at the 48. Josh, play action. Here comes the blitz. Steps up, fires, caught. Peyton Price cannot get away from a nice tackle by J.J. McCoy. He got about six back down to the Garland 42. But man, are the yards hard to come by, and they blocked the blitz that time. McCoy is a superb defender, and he just grabs Peyton Price by the ankle and keeps him from going. Had he gotten by him, he would have had sledding down the sideline, but a, another Peyton fantastic Price play from McCoy, J.J. McCoy, the quarterback for Garland. Josh is four of five passing here in the second or third quarter for 18 yards, but they're all kind of nickels and dimes. They need the quarter in the half dollar, third and seven. At the Garland 42, 14 to 10, Lee and Josh will throw again. Going sideline, Simpson, oh, he dropped it. 
He doesn't do that very often. 42, Murphy gets up and dances. He didn't do anything. It went right through the hands of one of the most pure receivers you'll see in Walter Simpson. That doesn't happen often. The, to his defense, the pass was a little bit behind him once again. He leaps up high, and it just goes right through the wickets, as 42 does. Murphy does come down and uh, chop him and take his legs out from underneath him. Boy, he had 20 yards on that play. It was a very nice job again to give Josh the credit of the, the time to throw from that offensive line. but. Garland's defense has had their ball, their backs are really in their territory throughout the third quarter. Lee has not taken advantage of that. Hill back to throw, a punt, excuse me, and it's 45. Here's a high snap, comes down with it, gets it off. This one he turns over. Fair catch at the 10, and that's where Garland will start this drive. 32-yard punt, Josh Hill, no return, and Lee has now had the ball at their 44 or 45, and also that time at the 42, it came away with nothing. Well, you have to just give credit to a great defensive scheme for the Garland Owls, and they have five or six, really their whole 11 out there can really run to the ball well and pursue and wreak havoc, and they've done just that, uh, limiting this high-powered Lee offense well under their average thus far. If you have not heard, Texas rallied from 10 down to beat Kansas 27-23. That is one Big 12 score. We'll update you on Texas Tech at A&M. Here's a fullback. Nice job and a great hit from Cole Skates again into the uh, helmet of Jones. Antonio Davis gets a couple of yards, three yards. 6 nothing. Texas Tech trailing at A&M. That now midway through the second quarter. Davis running against the grain. Also in on the tackles, number 19, Cordero Mumphrey, to help wrap up along with Skates for the lead defense. I'll tell you what makes these Garland running backs so tough. It's not that you can't get to them. It's that you get to them, and they're so strong. They break tackles, and it takes so much to get them down that sometimes there's nobody back at the end of the run. Here's a fumbled snap, and they get it off anyway. But great job by DeHaven. Uh-oh, he almost got loose. He does get a couple of yards out of a play that could have been a loss. Cordero Mumphrey was there. Borders did a great job. I'll tell you, did a good job. Crosby picked that thing up off the ground. And McKenzie also bolts through the line to help stuff with the initial drop by the quarterback slowed down the place progression for Garland, and Lee caught a bit of a break. Defensively for Robert E. Lee, third and four at their 16-yard line. Crosby, the quarterback, gets the play from Justin Williams. On their feet, the Lee fans that care about some defense. Third and four. Williams comes to the near side. Minute 18 to go, third quarter. Crosby with split backs behind him from the 16. He'll bring, oh, he's, oh, he gives it away, throws it, caught at the 20, and a great play by Zakari in Cuba. Crosby slipped away from Stripling and got the pass off for a gain of about a yard to Gutierrez, and he's dropped by to carry in Cuba. It was a huge play from the safety. Well, Crosby did a Houdini act just to get away from three or four lead defenders all over him. Leading the way was Ricky Sherfield, and he finds him out in the flat, and to carry in Cuba reading the play from the safety position wraps up for a big stop. Fourth and two, back to punt. Fodge at his about the four yard line. Micah Johnson is back at the midfield mark. Lee trying to bring some heat. Snap comes from Brian Jones. Snap, no pressure, gets it off and turns it over. Nice little rocket this time that Johnson will let hit at the 40 and just get away from, and Garland will touch it at the 45. And third drive of this quarter where Lee will start at their 40 or better. They'll start this one at the 43. Maybe the 45 and a 37-yard punt from Fodge. That one turned over very nicely. Yeah, sooner or later, they're going to have to break something uh, out of the wickets and uh, find an answer to solve this Garland defense that's very, very stingy today and is uh, giving the Lee offense all they can handle. Well, I tell you what, the Lee defense, since the long run from Borders, they gave up that bend but don't break drive in the second quarter. They have really tuned it up themselves. Lee at their 45. Up the gut, Price. 45 midfield, 40. 30, 20, you're not gonna catch Peyton Price, touchdown! He is amazing. And what a great block by Saron Black and a seal block inside, 55 yards. They've been coming at him, coming at him, and Lee breaks the big one. The tear play, the right-hand side of the line, just opens a big door, a nice door for Peyton Price, and he scoots through it, and he just races into the right corner for six. Yeah, before the game, uh, I was talking to Peyton Price's father, Sam, and uh, we know that the secondary for uh, Garland is a track meet, and he said he wanted to see his son speed against those safeties if he ever broke loose. Well, he saw it, and maybe Peyton could get the baton with him. Here comes the snap. The kick from Skate is up and good. 
Oh, did Robert Lee need that? 55 yards, 21-10 Red Raiders with 13 seconds to go. Third quarter, back in a minute. To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. Morning. What's up, bro? Welcome to the party. It's the ESPN Game Plan College Football Pay-Per-View Package. Get access to more than 150 extra college football games this season. Prepare to party. Call 1-888-SPORTS-IN and order ESPN Game Plan. Available with Cox Digital Cable. 13 seconds to go, third quarter. Robert E. Lee, 55-yard run from Peyton Price, and the kick is good, 21-10. One play, 55 yards and eight seconds for Peyton Price's dash to the end zone. Update, Longview has beaten North Garland 49-27. to They'll take on Dallas Jesuit next, and Micah Johnson rolls one deep in the end zone and Garden will take a knee. And so a nice job by Micah to force Garden to start this drive at their 20. Okay, 49-27, Longview beat North Garland at Williams Stadium. Mesquite beat South Garden 51-37. Here is 21-10 Lee, late third quarter. This is when in the past, guys, the defense has had a chance. They've played their guts out in the last part of the second quarter throughout most of this quarter. This is where you have another three and out to give the offense the ball back when the defensive garden might be somewhat stunned. They're really jacked up too. Let's see if they can uh, do just that. From their 20, the quarterback is Crosby. He runs play action. Going deep over the middle. Johnson is there. Incomplete coverage intended for Justin Williams. Second and 10, they went deep, and Micah was just in the neighborhood to make that tough to catch anyway. Second down and 10, Garland, you want to make them throw it, but again, you got to be careful because they do have some track people. That's just what I was going to say, that they like to bust that long pass play, but it's really not their forte, and now they're down by 11, so Lee Stevens has to watch out for the big pass play as well, along with the outside runs for the Garland now offense. Second down, Justin Simmons now at one of the defensive end position. They run the option. This is the Crosby, the quarterback, and he gets outside the 30 or the 27. He got seven, eight yards on just, he took that and ran with it. Kind of looked like Carlin Freeman from Longview. Yeah. Mitchell and Van Zandt there for Robert E. Lee. It's third and two, and that ends the third quarter. Our score, Robert E. Lee 21, Garland 10. We're back in one minute on News Talk 600 KTBB. Car shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Man, are we going to take every lap full speed? Yeah! Are we going to trade paint without fear? Yeah! Are we going to brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Supercut, proud sponsor of this Bradshaw Racing. Tyler Independent School District offers more advanced studies programs than any other school system in East Texas. The International Baccalaureate Program challenges students through a rigorous academic curriculum. Mary Lee Jones at MIT calls it the best high school prep curriculum an American school can offer. Education Week magazine calls the IB program the Cadillac of college prep programs. Just one more way, Tyler ISD provides every child every opportunity every day. We 
got back a little bit late. They didn't give us the full minute. Dominique Van Zandt has stopped Garland on third and two from the 28-yard line and got nothing. Craig Smoke with a good angle. Yeah, great job. Nice push up there in the middle part of the defense for Robert E. Lee. And it seems like they're getting a knack for stopping these big guys. They couldn't do it in the first half, but it's a great push once again for Lee. It is all about confidence. And boy, does Randy Huffstickler and Jay Law, Jerry Reed, Willie Williams and company, they got to be so proud on how they've bounced back from that dart early. Here's the punt by Fodge, and this is a cannon. Micah Johnson fields it and drops it at his 20 and then goes down at the 25. He did a good job of catching that because that the way it was kicked was going to go down inside the 20. And Lee now offensively after the defense led by the seniors early on. Remember the plays by Cole Skates early on when Garland was down inside the five and he got three straight big plays with the Haven. 45-yard punt from Fodge and a one-yard return. And the Lee offense after the 55-yard touchdown run from Price. Can they open it up here? Now this is where Mike Owens and Dow Wynn would love to have about a 10-play 75-yard drive that would uh, take four or five minutes off the clock. Let's see if they can get some kind of ground game going now. Offset eye. Giles the H-back. T.Y. right tackle. Nothing. Maybe a yard. Nudges out to the 26, and they have done a great job on stopping the running backs until that long run from Price. Washington was there. Cedric Washington and Brandon Antoine. He is an active young man. 6'2", 250 junior. And Mike Owens, during the week when I talked to him about the players in the Garland defense, he said, how many? They got a bunch of them. He said, Antwine is active. He is a man. He is a man child. And Brian Jones helps to bottle up that play as well, too, number 45. He's a big kid as well, 6'2", 240. Second down, nine. Lee at their 26 with Bailey, the center, the junior. Tight end is Giles on the far side, right in the middle of the field with Josh. Back to throw. Here comes the blitz at the middle. Steps up. Now has to run, gets outside, throws a seam pass, incomplete out of bounds intended for T.Y. And again, everything was deep. Everything was 20, 30 yards downfield, and it's third down and nine. The Red Raiders had four receivers out in the field, and the shortest one down the field was 15 yards, and that was uh, Warren, uh, Walter Simpson. you got to give guys like Desmond Baker and J.J. McCoy and Brian Fantastic. Johnson, 20s, played a lot of corner because they have shut down the Lee receivers. Simpson, Bush, of course, Bush has not played the second half, and it has been a lot of third and eights and 39s. 10-23 remaining third or fourth quarter. Hey, this game's up for grabs with Lee at the ball at the 26, third and nine. In motion, Giles, the H back to the near side, and Josh will throw it again. Sets up in the pocket now, scrambles. Does he get loose? 25 and slips at the 27, and Garland's defense, huge stop here, because Lee could have put that one out of reach. Cedric Washington, and again, I saw no receivers underneath. I might not have been looking very well, and it's fourth down. Well, he had John, he had John Williams inside of about eight yards down the field, but the pressure was such that he had to tuck the ball and run back to the far side, and he tries to make a move on number 34 up the middle, uh, Cedric Washington, and just can't get by him. Garland sets two people back deep. Number 12 is Tim Crosby, the quarterback, and McCoy, the dangerous one, the senior corner who has been very much involved in this one with two picks. John Giles, the snap, and Peyton Price is the up back, and now they're set. Snap to Josh, good snap, gets it off, turns it over a little bit. McCoy will field it as 40. Great coverage, uh-oh, dances away. 45 midfield, into Lee territory. He just made some great moves, you know it? There was good coverage downfield from Beard and company, but he just made some big time moves to get inside Lee territory. 34-yard punt, 11-yard return. It's a little bit colder outside today as it's normally been. The ball's really not carrying well on many of the punts, with the exception of Foge's last punt that went 45. But a nice straight down the field kick for Josh Hill, uh, giving his uh, rec uh, recovery team to get down and make the tackle. Boy, the lead defense has played so well it's in the third quarter. Can they go a couple of more nine minutes or so? Garland from the 49, and Crosby, the quarterback, is misfired on six of his eight passes. They go wing T, Borders bounces outside, Dominique Van Zandt, here's a penalty flag, and what could be a holding call at the bottom of the pile, the big tight end, 82, Nate Bowen. There's a player, uh oh no. There's a player for Lee down in the field. And we'll be back in one minute on News Talk 600, KTBB. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College. 
living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Represent your team like never before. On the field, on the court, it's all in our store. The spirit of your team, the season of your dreams. Looking for the victory, we've got what you need. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Your one-stop sports shop, Tyler Athletics. Hi, I'm Angie Billings. I have taught at Lee for 11 years. I teach English, and you're watching TISD Football on Cox. First and 20 after the holding call against Garland. Here's a wing back reverse, and it's loose. Picked up by Jason Stripling. Robert E. Lee recovers the fumble. They tried to run, Lee's wing back reverse, it got bobbled in the air by Gutierrez and Jason Stripling, who made the big play against Longview, recovers the fumble at the Garland 38. An update on McKenzie, it looks like he just had a cramp and he's off the field in his own power, that's good news, and the fumble recovery is even better. A huge break that time for Robert E. Lee, two or three Red Raiders converged on the back at the same time, the ball popped in the air, and Stripling alertly snatched it out, but was hit and brought down in his tracks. Big turnover for Garland. Two turnovers for either team. Lee has the two picks, Garland has a pick, and now they fumble it here. Williams and Simpson near side, Garland's bouncing around, double tight set. T.Y. breaks a tackle, 35, down near the 33, and this is ball control right here. Henderson and Washington, 83 on the tackle as well. That's Andrew Kirk and Brian Culp with a nice push block that time. And that's Tyrone for a gain of six. Culp, oh, as you mentioned, and Holland, Blake Larman too. Peel back outside, and number four found a little bit of a hole and danced through for one of his best games of the afternoon. The clock now is the ally of Robert E. Lee. So is the 21-10 lead. Double wing set. Peyton Price is the long setback. Second down and four. In motion, no, this is Peyton up the middle. Not much, he got close to the 30. And you talk about a monstrous third down here, third and about three, got a yard. Wilson was there, Robert Wilson. This Garland team is unbelievably deep. They really go truly too deep. Most teams, yep. you might have four or five key backups. They are truly too deep on both sides of the football. Well, we, we mentioned that at the outset. They come in waves, both offensively and defensively. They're very healthy and they're very strong. And Lee's having to, having to work real hard today to get most of anything in between the tackles. Simpson, Williams, far side. Williams in the slot. Tight end, Fleet, and Jonah Murphy, T.Y. Up the middle, pull block, Saran bounces outside, 30, really close to a first down. I think he has it. I think he got a great mark at the 28. Real close. Brown on the stop, Saran Black with the human island. Looked like there was some waves and a little ocean right behind him as well, a little wake behind Saran. A big ripple for sure. And I think he got a great mark at the 28, and they're going to bring the chains all the way over, and Craig will just go straight to you right there as they bring the chains across. Watch out for John Williams. He's one of the guys that handles the chains, and he always trips at this moment. Nope, he's okay. 7.38 remaining in the game, and here comes the stretch. Craig? First down. First down, Robert E. Lee, and gives Saran and Sam Banks great credit for the pull. And with 7.38 to go, Lee has first down at the Garland 29, maybe the 28. Well, they run that play so well, and once you get the big guys, the big uglies out front to pull for him, Garland did their best to bottle it up, but number four, Tyrone Ross, just is able to skirt outside and dance along the sideline to pick up a crucial first down. As we told you in the pregame, don't forget we have the Dusty Rhodes Marine Player of the Week. $50 in the name of the Player of the Week goes to the KTBB Scholastic All-Stars program, honoring 22 incredibly talented and very smart student athletes from over 140 schools in East Texas, thanks to Dusty and also our buddy Steve. Here's T.Y. stretch play, left tackle, 20, 15, look at him go! Down inside the 10, first and goal, Robert Ailey inside the 10, down to the 7, 22 for T.Y. Well, he runs across the grain very well. He picks up a big block that opens the door right from the outset from the pool guard on the left side. Of course, that's Sam Banks. 
and he also has Colt falling behind Banks to, to really just open the doorway and with his great vision. He cuts back inside and gets deep inside the 10 yard, Garland's 10 yard line. This has been a game where you test your patience. They have had trouble at times with the running game except for a couple of big bolts from Peyton and Josh at the six. 7.14 to go. T.Y. right tackle. Not much. Right behind big old Matt Holland, 271 senior. But the clock continues to tick now under seven minutes when they take the next stop. And, or the next stop. and by the way, Murphy that time in the stop for the Garland out. And help too from Michael Horn, the linebacker on that side as they run to the strong side of the field, does Lee. And Garland uh, really has to bow their backs here to try to keep Lee out of the end zone. I tell you, it would be a heck of a play here. And of course, if you're Lee, you're just pounding on that clock. But a bootleg with the option of a tight end on the drag because they are slashing right at the defensive, uh, at the front where the attack is. Full house backfield, Josh, T.Y. inside the five, touchdown! What a tremendous lead block by Saron Black. He just mauled Devonta Brown and also Royal and Price with the lead block, and it's 27-10, Robert E. Lee. And Peyton Price just locked, laid out Rock Morgan, too, and dancing in the end zone, falling through that alleyway that was opened up for him is T.Y. Tyrone Ross for his second TD of the game on the ground. 6.31 to go, fourth quarter. Robert E. Lee, 27, Garland, 10. Extra point to come from Cole Skate, who has come up big time in this game on the defensive end. Snap, hold, kick, he got partially blocked, but it's good anyway. Oh man, that thing almost went the other way. 6.31 to go, fourth quarter. Robert E. Lee, 28, Garland, 10. We're back in 60 seconds on News Talk 600 KTVB. For the best treats and eats and hottest winning in Texas, you gotta go to DQ. Only DQ's got the classic four-piece all-white chicken strip country basket served with fries, Texas toast, and the best green gravy anywhere for just $3.99. Only DQ's got a cool creamy banana split made with DQ soft serve for $1.99. And only DQ's got the peel away giveaway game where you can win food, treat prizes, or your chance to win a brand new Dodge Ram 1500 Lone Star Edition pickup. Men, I think our racing team needs to reflect our Supercut sponsorship. So, make some changes. First off, we're gonna go to Clear Helmet so our racing fans can see your fine Supercut hair. Those are made out of glass. Y'all be careful. Second, uniform change. How are we supposed to drive? There's no armholes. I haven't figured that one out yet, but we're working on it. And I'm out of here. Fellas, out of your mind. That's not where are you going? Mind. Supercut, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Can you drive a stick? I'm Oral Taylor, and I've been with TISD for more than three decades, and you're watching TISD Football on Cox Communications. To see this sign on your house, put this sign out front. Century 21 Advantage. Call or visit our website. Micah Johnson set the kick off for Robert E. Lee with 6.31 to go in the fourth quarter, 28-10 Robert E. Lee. Scoring summary for Robert E. Lee, six plays, 38 yards and 229 off of the fumble recovery and they respond and take advantage of that turnover and Tyrone Ross takes it in the final yard, five yards for a six for Robert E. Lee. And Lee tried to put Garland, the running team, in a passing situation. Micah with a high driving kick. This is Borders at the four, bobbled it for a second, 10, 15, tries to get outside and he does turn the corner. Wow. Outside the 35-yard line, they had him hemmed in. Jeremy Moore is very frustrated, but he got around the corner, and he got out to the 34-yard line. It looked like he was down inside the 20. Give credit to Lance Heap, too, as he blew up a Garland blocker down the field to really try to uh, force out the return man, Borders, and Borders just running as hard as he can. Barely gets around Jeremy Moore, who forces him out of bounds at that point at the 34. Big old Gabriel Lacey. We'll call him, if we call Sarah the human island, I'm going to call Gabriel Lacey the peninsula. Justin Simmons and James Wilson, the defensive ends. Lee with a six-man front. Pitch it back to Davis, tries to bounce outside and run out of bounds by Takari and Cuba. Got four, five, but 
Lee will give up the four and five yard chunks right now. 6-17 to go in the game. It's 28 to 10, Robert E. Lee right now with Garland at their 39 yard line. Well, they get a good push do the Garland Owls on their offensive front, but really in the second half, Lee has neutralized their power running game and done a much better job to this point. Garland only has one first down in the entire second half. Second down, Craig Smoke on the sideline, and uh, we're going to try to get a comment from him in a moment on, uh, on the offensive line starting to make some things happen in the running game. Deep pitch back, watch for the halfback pass. They throw it deep. Quint Nicholson picks it off. Third turnover, 40. Midfield, Robert Ely's defense, tuning it up, baby. Intercepted. They got the ball at midfield. And look at the Lee sideline jacked up. And they're going crazy here on the near side as Lee's defense has answered the bell today. And they have been the reason that Lee has uh, taken up an 18-point lead thus far in the ballgame. That is the first career interception for the junior, Quent Nicholson. His real name, LeQuent, 5'10", 160-pound junior, and Lee is picked off now. Two passes, that one was thrown by uh, uh, Davis, the running back, and that's what you do when you're a running team and you start to get behind. You start to have to use some trick plays, but sometimes they work, and so Lee was really ready for that one. First down, Red Raiders at the 49 with 6.07 to go. Double tight set up the gut. Peyton Price, five, six yards down to the 45. Time of possession now in the second half, Jay. Uh, uh, Randy has all been Robert E. Lee. Yeah, pretty much here in the fourth quarter. They're a good five minutes ahead here in the half. Uh, time of possession-wise, overtaking Garland's lead that they had by a couple minutes in the first half. Second down and four. Josh Hill gets the play, comes to the sideline. Boy, Mike Owens has got to be thrilled with his team responding to what was probably one of those peel the paint off the wall, chip a couple of bricks inside the field house at halftime, and they were leading when he probably did that. Double tight set, no messing around here. Peyton the up back, up the gut, right tackle, fumbles the football, and Josh Hill has somehow been able to get to the ball. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I've ever seen Peyton drop the ball. No, he, it was a helmet to his ribcage area. It appeared to be Cedric Brown or Brian Jones on the near side that caused the ball to plot free, but alertly number 11 dives for it. And falls Has up. this team, which couldn't recover a fumble if they were the only ones They've on the field, today. become a team that recovered? The last three or four weeks, think about it. Move the skeet horn, yep. remember. The league comes in with a plus three overall in the entire season, and that has all happened in the last three or four weeks of district play. They, they were minus two at one point. Uh, the after huge the turnover loss. last week in the, at the one-yard line when they got the big hit from Dominique Van Zandt and Micah recovered. Third and four now. Wing back, this is T.Y. Cuts it up, does not get it though. Boy, Garland continues to play with their hearts out here. That could have been big time and they will call timeout. 4.33 to go. Steven Christian, by the way, with the lead block, but T.Y. just got a couple of three. They will punt it away here after the timeout and we'll take it. 28 to 10 lead, back in 30 seconds on KTBB. You know what I like about Texas? We'll always find a way to stay cool. And when our work is through, we know just what to do. Every true Texan loves a DQ. Pop into DQ for new popcorn chicken. These crispy, delicious, all-white chicken bites are perfect for dipping. Plus, get any size Coke free with a large order. And for all you chocoholics, try our newest treat, the Triple Chocolate Utopia. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Card shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Man, are we going to take every lap full speed? Yeah! Are we going to trade paint without fear? Yeah! Are we going to brush our hair 100 times a day and condition after every shampoo and choose the right hair color to match our skin tone? Tim? Terry, I'm an autumn. I'm a spring. Now let's go out there and win one! Supercuts, proud sponsor of Fitz Bradshaw Racing. Fourth down here for Robert E. Lee at the 43-yard line of Garland. And it looks like they will definitely try to pooch it down if they can deep into Garland territory. And a couple of notes in our post game: Craig Smoke will get Mike Owens 
in our post game, regardless of what happens here today, and also a couple of players, and also will try to keep up with what goes on, whoever wins, Garland or Lee, on the coin flip against Berkner. Fourth down and two. Back to punt, Josh Hill. Stands at his 44. Garland with one man back, it's McCord. When you wish you could duct tape him to the back of the end zone if you could. Snap, pressure, gets it off. Nice job by Josh. Nice punt, fair catch, McCoy at the 12. And they brought a lot of people that time. 32 yard punt. And you're right, Randy, the ball just doesn't seem to have much oomph on it. Well, it's about 55 degrees and a, a little nip in the air, and the ball's just not carrying well at all, at least off the feet of the punters, because Josh Hill comes in averaging nearly 43 yards a kick, and today he's sitting about 10 yards underneath that. Osborne now. Peninsula 2 comes in the game with defensive tackle. Bobby number 68. And the defense of Robert E. Lee has risen to the occasion for 44 minutes after a tough little first quarter. Back to throw, play action pass. Quarterback Crosby now has to scramble, gets away. Knocked down at the 17, 18 yard line. Nick Mitchell, we've called him a bunch. Boy, it looked like Gabriel Lacey was, uh, Osborne was uh, being hog tied. It could have been a rodeo right there. Well, there's no one downfield open as Crosby uh, really very quickly tucks the ball under and decides to run it. And Lee's uh, secondary comes back up to help make the stop after forcing him outside. So Robert E. Lee defensively now, just trying to make sure that they keep the uh, big play from happening here. Up front, it's Wilson, Simmons, and Osborne. And Van Zant, Mitchell, and Stripling all crowd the line of scrimmage. Mitchell backs away, here's the quarterback draw. This is Crosby for a first down outside the 25 to the 28. To carry in Cuba, the sophomore who stepped in for the senior Eric Ajiki, who I've been told may have received an offer despite the injury from Oklahoma State University, where wow. Martel Van Zandt, Brandon Pettigrew, Patrick McGee of JT, among others, are there. First down run by Crosby for a gain of seven. He has seven carries for 12 yards. Four minutes to go on the snap. Here's a snap and a pre snap call. Hey, you know, Grider, Tyner Grider, the sophomore. Moves early. Moves early that cost Garland five yards. Craig, did you notice any kind of a different feel from the players when they came out in the second half compared to what you saw? Even with the lead, they were not happy at halftime. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm sure Coach Owen said something to get them hyped up. I mean, the way they played, the, the way Garland was able to run the ball all over them in the first half, I mean, you can see just in the defense alone, and when the defense starts playing like they are, getting the ball to the offense, giving them time to work with it, I mean, anything can happen. 28 to 10, snap. Crosby, they've had problems with the snap. Here's a pass over the middle. Caught first down at the 38. There were a lot of red jerseys. That was a nice throw by Crosby to Williams and a gain of 16 yards coverage for the middle linebacker, Warren DeHaven. Yeah, just a nice job of route running inside the seam on the coverage zone coverage for Lee. And Crosby uh, throws a dart in the middle of the field for the completion. 344, Lee barely gets anybody off the field in time. And they call timeout. They didn't catch it. And what a great play by Sam Banks. But now getting loose is Reinhard Weiss. And Cuba blows him up. Lee was trying to call a timeout. He still is not down and finally dropped by Stripling after a loss of a couple of yards. And Sam Banks with a tremendous play on the penetration to blow that play up. He just got up real quickly and shot past Carlos Perez and Tyler Grider. And he had a, an arm around the waistline of Reinhard Weiss, but Weiss squirts free and keeps running real hard. And takes three or four of the Red Raiders to finally corral him and bring him down. Lee has given up, from what I can tell, just 30 yards rushing in the second half after they gave up a lot, of course, nearly 100 and what, 60, 150 Randy? on the ground in the first. So they've given up 30 yards in the second half, and one of the reasons that they've been able to do that is they have just stacked eight and nine men at the line of scrimmage, and they've dared Garland to throw the football with now 326 to go in the game. Again, if Lee hangs on and wins this game, Richardson Berkner is next, the Rams. And Randy, if they, if Lee goes against Berkner, it's gonna be a flip for home and home. With, uh, uh, we, we talked at halftime uh, with the coach, Coach Ledford of Richardson Berkner, and they will flip home and home either at Berkner on a Friday night, it appears, in Richardson at Wildcat Ram Stadium, or at Lee's Trinity Mother Francis Rowe Stadium when they're at home the home of both JT and Lee's. Crosby's shotgun snap, three-step drop, pressure over the middle, almost picked off and caught by Williams again. 
Short gain out to the 46, gain of six, give him seven, and it's third down and about four. Well, the quarterback gets enough time to throw the ball out of the pocket before Sam Banks wrestles through his block and hits him right as he throws the football, but he makes the completion I think and another big third down for I think Garland. Garland will try to get the ball more than this Justin Williams. Yeah. He has 13 catches, 292 yards, and three touchdowns, including an 80-yarder this year. But he has been non-factor today. Here's a fullback, Rice ball in the middle. Nice job by Sherfield. Looked like Mike Allstott in Tampa Bay, short of the first down. Stripling was there. And this brings up fourth and a yard. Gabriel Lacey back into defensive tackle. And uh, by the way, Preston Hill has checked in. Here's fourth down and a yard for the hammer wing team, which has been, well, out of fuel in the second half. And Weiss, does he get the first down? He fumbles. And it is loose, picked up by Garland, and they get a first down. Boy, Jason Stripling, I think, may have pulled that thing loose. Crosby was trailing the play. He had the first down. Then it was recovered by Crosby for a gain of six. And Garland's really in a in a fast move. There. No huddle offense as they come right back to the line of scrimmage. Bo Banbury in a middle linebacker. Low snap again for Crosby. He's going to have a bad back looking for all that. Now he wants to throw it across the field and caught at the 34. First down. Gain of 13 with 2.40 to go. As Garland now trying to get themselves close to the lead end zone at the 33-yard line and a gain of 12. Maybe a little too much too late as they just don't have the offensive style to do that, but they are completing passes uh, and get a nice running game on the turnover. Actually, they recover their own fumble on the play before. 2.36 to go. Clock running. Crosby straight drop. Going deep. Williams is there, but so is Micah Johnson. Tipped in the air and great coverage by 24. Preston was there as well. Micah Johnson has the pick today. He had a fumble recovery last week against Corn up at Hanby, and of course he also kicks off return punt. He's had a big game. Tyler Owens has checked in the game for Robert Lee on the defensive end. So as I think Colby Ray, 36, as Lee tries to get some backup valuable time. Who would have thunked that about an hour ago? <laughs> well, the Lee defense is uh, getting tired as he's been out in the field here the last few minutes of the game, but uh, they're, they're holding Garland at bay at the moment. Second down, Crosby in the shotgun. Now Crosby tells McCoy to go the other direction. There's nobody on the line of scrimmage that's going to come back. Yeah, and uh, that looked like, you know what that looked like? The Arena League right there where you could get a running start, but uh, that's not going to work, and it's third or second down and 15. Let's talk about the lead defense, David. They've really taken over the game. And Absolutely. we go back to the very first possession of the second half. The Garland had the ball. They went forward on fourth and two, and Lee with a big, huge stop, and really it, it, it turned it the momentum around. Team. It ignited yeah. the Lee offense, too, with a big touchdown run from Peyton Price, and uh, that was the uh, possession of the game and the play of the game. And uh, we will have a uh, Dusty Rhodes Marine player of the game a little bit later on. And I think we all agree on who it's going to be, but we'll get to that in a moment. Here's the snap. Here's the running play outside borders. Gets around one tackle at the 40, 35, and twisted out of bounds by the cornerback, Quentin Nicholson, who has his first ever pick tonight. Lance Heap was there, and he got about four, maybe four. That's about it, so it's third down and 11. Well, he was the first one there to disrupt the play and string it out, out further left or wide left, and then uh, had several players, Van Zant, Stripling, et cetera, et cetera, and Nicholson to help wrap up. This is a defense that deserves, and the offense made the plays when they had to. Another low snap to Crosby, wants to throw, rolls right. Now looks over the defense and now wants to run for his life, and he gets a block, 40, 35, gets away from Bambry. 30, down inside the 30, and there's a late hit at the end of the play, but they have stopped the clock in a timeout. Garland at the 27-yard line with a minute 38 to go. This is a defense that deserves tremendous credit because when Borders went off on the races for 56 yards, then they had the long drive. They were bending like the Trinity game at Pennington Field, and then they have since that time just made huge plays. And I mean, they're starting to get contagious with the turnovers. Hey, okay, let's, let's just go ahead and say who your choice is for player of the game. I think Cole Skates. Well, I mentioned that a few minutes ago, but anyway, elite, elite, elite. I just said Cole Skates. You're exactly right. Cole Skates. Cole Skates here. You Cole bet. Skates. And I think we might have one more. I might pick another one today. Hey, you know what? No penalties in the second half for Lee, too. They've eliminated I, the middle blunder. I think they're scared to death to get any more. I think something happened at halftime said that's going to have to stop and we're going to run early in the morning, boys. <laughs> kind of thing. Or maybe late at night. Late at night. I think, the, I think the fear factor of knowing if they don't win this game, conditioning starts, and so do the mat drills pretty soon. So. Yep. I don't want that to happen just yet. 
Well, we can tell who made the adjustments at halftime. Looks like the lead defense has been adjusted and notched it up a little bit. Crosby back to throw, rolls far side over the middle, almost picked off by, or over the middle to the sideline, almost picked off by Stripling on fourth and four, and the lead defense deserves an applause that they can hear all the way back to the field house in South Time. Yeah, they make the plays when they have to, and they, they do once again on the final drive. We would think that Garland has the ball, and uh, the vaunted Garland now wing T offense has been shut down here in the second half by the Robert E. Lee Red Raider defense, and uh, they're getting a nice ovation as they come they off the really field. They really are. Man, the fans have responded today. It's great to see that, and Lee now will take over at their 27, and this thing was up for grabs until around midway through the third quarter, when, or at the end of the third quarter, when Peyton Price, his, uh, of course, uh, 55-yard run, and now this is the best position in football. It's called the victory position as Hill will take the snap at his 27 with a minute 32 to go, takes a knee. Oh, and there's a shot to Andrew Bailey by the safety, Murphy, and that's okay. The next time he does it, you just do a, you know, an ear hole. But, uh, all he's trying to do is run out the clock, but you got to love Murphy because he's trying, and he's going to be taken out because you don't want to see something happen here because... With the way things are set up, you never know. These teams might meet again a year from now because they're both now very proud and Lee's defense. Now Lee, all of a sudden, this is, this is a this is a win against a very top notch, a top notch tradition filled program. They already know they can beat the Longviews, the JTs, and the and the Lufkins of the world because they've done that in the district. And this is a big win for Mike Owens and company because I tell you, throughout the week. Very intense, quiet, and nervous about this Garland offense at Lee's defense with the J. Law, Randy Huffstickler, Willie Williams, and Jerry Reed, huge in the second half. Under 40 seconds to go, third down as they again take a knee. And this is going to keep Josh from probably getting close to 100 yards. But look, hey, let's go Doesn't back matter. to the 77-yard run that was monstrous because of the field position. And they trailed in, too. 22 seconds. This will be the last play of the game. Third down, takes a knee, and that will wrap it up. Robert E. Lee, not only today, made their eighth consecutive appearance in the postseason in 5A, but because of the 28-10 win today against Garland, Robert E. Lee, for the eighth consecutive year, has moved into the second round of the playoffs as well. And that is awfully impressive. Craig Smoke will get Mike Owens in a moment. As Lee Football, of course, right here, live from Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium in Tyner. We'll stay with you in a moment for more post game. Mike Owens gets congratulations from Jeff Jordan, among others, and Craig Smoke with Mike Owens. Coach Owens, uh, Garland had 10 points going into halftime, didn't score at all in the second half. Your defense really stepped up and made some big plays. Just talk about their performance today. Well, they did a great job. The coaches went in there and talked to them. We gave them, the, I think they had the whole halftime to talk to them, and they got some things straight. And we just played hard in the second half. I mean, they really did a great job. The offensive line did a good job of giving Josh Hill a lot of time. Then you had the big runs by Peyton Price. Uh, just talk about the way that uh, your offense stepped it up, that stopped the penalties and uh, didn't have any more turnovers. Well, we just uh, we did a lot better job in the second half in every area. I mean, all of it, kicking game, everything. So uh, I just think that was the difference because they are a real good football team. It's probably as good as we play. All right, you got Richardson Burton coming up. Uh, how are y'all going to do the flip, and uh, what do you look forward to working with your team on this next week? Well, we got a lot of things we need to work on. Our, uh, you know, passing game for one thing. You know, we uh, we just you know didn't see a lot of things that were there, and so we've got to get to where we can see those things. You know, and, and that's uh, I don't know if it's, we're probably nervous and, and anxious, but the offensive line did a great job. He had great protection all night. Thanks, coach. All right, all right, Craig. Great job. The players of the game, our player of the game, is uh, Robert E. Lee yes, linebacker Cole Skates. He earlier Dusty Rhodes Marine Player of the Game because of his kicking chores. Remember, with the four field goals a couple of three weeks ago, but he's the uh, player of the game with his defensive effort because his plays down to the goal line at the end of the first uh, half really kind of turned this defense around. And Lee, of course, winning tonight 28 to 10. Also, special mention to the entire defense in the long run. Johnson, Nicholson, both have interceptions, dribbling, fumble recovery. And, uh, and it was just a, a tremendous job. As Kerry mentioned, who's going to make the adjustments at halftime? Robert and he made the adjustments, and the, the kids got kind of uh, pretty jacked up over the second half. Hi, Josh. This is the
Know what I like about Texas There ain't no place that I'd rather be you Got a much nicer pace The family has its place And you can still find a wide open space Dairy Queen's what I like about Texas From the blizzard to the dude man I know From the cities out to the ranches There's a DQ wherever I go DQ That's what I like about Texas Hello, my name is George Faber and I'm the Visual and Performing Arts Director for TISD. It is my pleasure to serve as the administrator of many fine award-winning programs in our district from kindergarten through high school, as well as work with many highly qualified teachers. Our main goal is to help students receive a well-rounded education of mind, body, and soul to promote the integration of arts into math, science, reading, English, and social studies. You're watching TISD Football on Cox. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. Here's a question. If you needed your insurance, who would you call? Not the name of the company, but the name of the person. You've got two seconds. Coming up blank, you may want to consider Allstate. You'd have a local agent you can count on, a licensed professional whose name you know, not just a number. You deserve a relationship with a real person. For all your insurance needs, call the McIntyre Insurance Agency in the Albertson Shopping Center. Thanks for watching High School Football, presented by TISD and Cox Communications of Tyler. Brought to you by Dairy Queen and Supercuts. Also brought to you by these sponsors.